Hello my friends, 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 hello my friends. What's going on? Welcome back. Random show settings with I your friend, Agostino Zinger. What's happening? What's really good? What's cracker lacking my people? What's cracker lacking my people? How you doing? How you feeling? Hope you're all well. Wherever wherever this lovely lovely jubbly live stream may find you i hope you're doing swimmingly fine just as i am doing it's sometime late in the night i'm cracking up in a fucking magnum i probably shouldn't be drinking it so late because i'm aiming to go to the gym in a few hours but you know what we ride on the edge we ride on the edge we're rimming streaming we're pushing it we're testing the waters we're doing things we probably shouldn't do just for the sake of it so here we fucking go gonna crack up in a magnum and get this shit started so wherever you are at the moment if you're drinking some water if you've got some coffee if you've got a little beer in your hand make sure you take a swig with that with me and let's fucking get this fucking stream started you feel me ah big up yeah that's my new crack you know like um little wayne back in the day with the mixtapes little wayne always do the lighter sound right as he's sparking up his joint right and you know he's gonna put in a sick verse my little wayne um equivalent of a lighter will be me cracking open um you know a little magnum that'll be me C- cracking open this little tonic wine you feel me little tonic wine cracking it open it's a shame that i can only drink these because these are really fattening i'm not gonna lie they're just syrup you know it's full of sugar got some alcohol in it but unfortunately because my belly can't handle beer anymore and because my belly can't handle fucking whiskey anymore or wig ski i have to drink these fucking tonic wines these are the only things i can fucking drink now because unfortunately for whatever reason maybe it's the barley maybe it's the wheat maybe it's something but whenever i try and drink beer whenever i try and drink whiskey i get really bad leaky butt i know it's a bit extreme to talk now about this at the beginning of the stream so i do apologize if you're eating or if you're doing something that you know isn't as nasty as what I'm talking about. I do apologize, but I thought I'd share with you guys because I feel comfortable here. I feel like I'm in a safe space. I feel like I'm amongst friends. But whenever I do try and drink beer or whiskey, I get a leaky butt. So I have to drink these fucking things. I'm not even going to check how much calories this shit has in it. But this Magnum original Jamaican recipe probably has a lot of fucking sugar in this 200 millimeter bottle. I'm sure there's a lot of sugar in it, but it's the only thing I can drink. It's the only thing I fucking, it fucking gets me a little bit buzzed without having a leaky butt. So I keep on drinking it. I keep on fucking drinking it. So big up everybody in the stream chat. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for joining me. Random show settings. We're having a good time. We're going to have a fucking blast. We're going to have some hee hee ha ha's. And we're going to make the best of it as per usual. Um, Big up everybody in the stream chat. Appreciate you. Please make sure you like the stream if you're enjoying it. Like the stream. Get those likes up for me. That's all I ask from you. Just get those likes up for me. Interact with me in the stream. And that's it. Big up Young Old Vibes, my G. <laughs> TMI. I apologize, my queen. I apologize. Big up Josie. Oh, is that true? Does that actually exist? Sounds like IBS. Try glutes. Is that such a thing? No way. Is that what I need to do? Let's Let's see if this is a thing um gluten-free whiskey does that actually exist gluten-free whiskey don't 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 surprise me like this with common sense don't give me these practical common sense solutions josie wow I don't, this is a thing hold on where can i where can i find this okay people are talking about okay so i might have what is that what i might have i might have celiac i need to actually get diagnosed to be fair what the fuck is celiac celiac is that what i might have no way do i have celiac am i broken (laughs) people am i broken is there something wrong with me am i broken (laughs) celiac disease is a condition where your immune system attacks your own tissues when you eat gluten it stops you from taking in nutrients no i don't think i have celiac i don't think i have that all i have is just yeah exactly exactly teju teju good good point teju i could just stop drinking all I do, to be fair, whenever I drink, this is a thing that's weird, just to give you guys an overview so you can, we can do a little bit of group therapy here, right? Group diagnosis. I never had an issue before. In the past, maybe five years ago, I could drink a 12-pack of beers and I'd be perfectly fine. I used to do that usually most weekends. I'd be sitting at home watching football. I'd just chug open the beers and watch football all day and go to sleep. I was fine. Same with whiskey. Then suddenly, something happened to me where I couldn't drink beer. Big up Wingus McDingus. Appreciate it, brother. Shout out Booze Poos. I bet Tiger Thick does a number on your backside. <laughs> You'd be firing rusty water out your arse for days after drinking that muck. Exactly, yeah. No, no. 
I bet you it does. I bet you it fucking does. I bet you it fucking does. Tiger Fick probably... I can't imagine. Big up fucking <laughs> Wingus McDingus. Did you see, I keep him? Do you remember the video I, I showed you guys of fucking Eddie Bravo drinking Tiger Fick and grimacing? It, we know it tastes bad because every review I've seen, even proper whiskey reviews online on YouTube, they always they always make a face when they drink it. So it definitely doesn't taste nice. It's definitely not nice on the palate. So I can't imagine what it does to your butt. But bigger Wingus McDingus. So what I was saying was. I was fine to drink beer. I was fine to drink whiskey. Then one day I woke up and now when I drink beer or what, like the other day, I went to a hot pot, right? Went to a hot pot with the family and we had some hot pot. It was really nice. And um, I ordered an acai beer, right? A nice chilled acai beer because having hot pot, I feel I felt a little bit, you know, I felt a bit risque. And then the next day, leaky butt. So straight away it happened. And now when I drink whiskey, it happens. So now I have to sometimes if I go out, I'll just drink vodka straight. But I don't really like the taste of vodka, to be fair. I prefer the taste of whiskey. So if I can get some gluten-free whiskey, I'm going to fucking buy that shit. I swear to God, I'm doing that. Let's see if that's even possible because I want some gluten-free whiskey. I don't fucking care. Let's see. Let's do, glu let's do gluten-free whiskey Tesco. Let's see if there's anything available in Tesco. It actually exists. Gluten-free. Hmm. I'll do my research. I'll do my research. Let's see Asda. Asda. Let's do Lidl. Lidl. I'll do my research and find out. But if any of you guys are in the UK and you do find a gluten-free liqueur or something, right, please make sure you let me know because I will buy that shit instantly. Let's see. Let's do gluten-free liqueur. Let's do UK. Let's see if anyone... What alcohol can be included as a gluten-free diet? Cider, wine, cherry, which is basically what I'm drinking spirits ports and liqueurs what is actually a good someone give me a gluten-free fucking whiskey Who's, it doesn't have one okay gluten-free alcohol there you go big up this big up this blog called gluten-free blogger what is a gluten-free alcohol that's basically me that's me on a night out all right I, that's me all right that's what i want to be all right i want to be out on the town let's see um what alcohol is gluten-free Wine, spirit, sparkling port and sherries. Wine is made of the... Is there a particular brand? Can you give me a brand that is gluten-free, you fucking cunt? So just giving me a list of a particular drinks. What spirits are gluten-free? Most people get confused when it comes to spirits. The guidance... Um, yes, what should you call it? This means and all alcohol spirits are gluten-free. No, they're not. Because I get leaky butt when I drink whiskey. This is fucking shit advice. The gluten-free blogger, you're talking rubbish. This is just fucking SEO farming. Jub Jubel beer. What the fuck is Jubel beer? Which alcohol contains gluten? I don't know. I'll fucking figure it out. I'm a big boy. I'll figure it out. What are you guys saying in the chat? Gin and tonic, rum and coke. Mark Norman's Bodega Cat Rye whiskey is gluten free. Oh really? Okay, let's try that out. Mark, what's it called? Bodega Cat. Let's see if we can we get that in the UK yet. Bodega Cat whiskey. That's actually a, that's actually a good name, isn't it? I quite like that name. I'm not gonna lie. I actually prefer that name. Then fucking obviously um tiger fic. Can we get Bodega Cat Whiskey in the UK? Let's see. Is it available to buy in the UK just yet? Can we buy this? Bodega Cat print is on Etsy. Someone selling a an a print of honestly, bro. Okay, have you look 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 us look at the world that we live in. Someone selling a print, an illustration of Bodega Cat Whiskey on etsy for 17 pound 88 pay, 88 like who, who's gonna buy a draw like this is like the equivalent of that fear of one joke isn't it about drawing porn someone's gonna draw a bottle of whiskey and sell it on etsy who's who the fuck's gonna buy that shit maybe that's what i should do maybe i should just paint actually i'm gonna paint a bottle of tiger thick whiskey and put it on etsy and see how many i can sell i might actually do that <laughs> <laughs> and then whatever I make on there, I'm gonna donate to like a dog charity or something. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm actually I might do that. So to God, I'm gonna paint a bottle of fucking Tiger Fig whiskey, list it on Etsy, and whatever money I make from selling it, I'm gonna donate all the money to like a what you call it to like a dog charity. I'm gonna do that. Yeah? R.I.P. R.I.P. Tank. <laughs> that would be fucking amazing. That would be such a good little troll. That might be something I might do, but that's fucking insane. People are painting bottles of whiskey from comedians. Anyway, can we buy Bodega Cat Whiskey in the UK? Not so far. Come on, man. So it's, it's available. It's so annoying. You can't buy that type of whiskey in the UK. Yes. Okay, it's not available in the UK, unfortunately. It doesn't look like it. How to find whiskey. Scotch whiskeys. 
Bloody hell, you can't buy this shit in the UK. Is that for real? Let's do shopping. What's the shopping tab? Products. Can we see it, please? Okay, no Bodega Cat whiskey. I can buy all this shit, but I can't buy Bodega Cat, unfortunately. Fuck. Big up Space Shades Cow. My spliff is gluten free. Yeah. 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 Um, mine calls celiac, can drink whiskey, not beer, though. Yeah. Big up um, RNGLP. My issue is whiskey and beer. When I try and drink them, it's not. Because I don't. I, I can drink whiskey. That's. I mean, I'm sorry, vodka. That's fine, but vodka is a bit boring. So I want to switch it up. Bodega Cat is low key. R says Assad. No surprise. All these. All these comedians. Oh, fucking ass. Oh, so big up Wingus McDingus. Is cat gluten free? Is cat, yeah, exactly. Of course it is. You know cat's gluten free. You know, especially the cat that I get. Straight from the fucking boat. You know what I mean? From so-and-so. You know, you know, you know. I get that fucking... I get that Miley Cyrus cat. You know what I mean? I get that Miley Cyrus cat. You feel me? You feel me? Those who know, knows. I get that take, take McRae suit. I get that take McRae fucking cat. You feel me? Um... Big up Assad, what you said about Bodega Cat Whiskey being ass. You know what's funny though? I don't know if you guys are the same as me, but I feel like there's not a lot of comedians I'm going to trust with alcohol. I'm not going to lie. A lot of these guys are like, I'm not going to say they're like, <sighs> comedians for the most part are the type of people that they're just happy to get any type of free drinks. They're not really the connoisseurs of like booze and stuff. Do you know what I mean? The only person I might trust is maybe Ron White or something. He looks like somebody that, again, I don't know if he drinks anymore, maybe he's sober, but Ron White looks like somebody that knows his drinks. He knows how to like enjoy a beverage. Like he knows how to eat well. He knows how to live well. You know, that's how people are going to, I'm going to believe, or I'm going to like be okay to buy their stuff. The other guys, they just like to get fucked up. You know, like getting fucked up doesn't equal, like, I don't think for instance, me, I would be a good um, reviewer of alcohol beverages because I don't really discern much when it comes to taste or quality. I'm just in it for something that's going to get me turned. Do you know what I mean? So you wouldn't really trust me with my opinion on what's a good whiskey because I'm looking for the best option I can buy at my fucking budget. But I think people that actually know what they're talking about when it comes to drinks, like they can actually discern from taste, you know, they've got a good palate, um, they enjoy it well, they drink it well, they can handle their drink. Those are the ones. I think most comedians, like, look at Bert Kreischer. You guys told me on the stream chat, big up the stream chat, you guys are always knowledgeable. Remember when I was saying on the stream, why isn't Bert sponsored by more alcohol, alcoholic companies, right? Because he's obviously a boozer, he loves to get fucked up. And you guys told me in the stream that he's a liability to a company. Because he's so fucked up and because he's clearly an alcoholic, no company want to endorse him because he, he's, he probably lives a life too hard, right? He probably goes too hard in the pain when it comes to drinking so i think that also is um works against comedians because comedians are like fun time boys you know what i mean they're just guys who like to hang out late at night finger bang waitresses but i wouldn't really think of them as discerning you know um judges of booze and of like food and shit i don't really trust their palate in the slightest so it's hard for them to also then figure out to get the drinks right because mark again mark norman i love the guy funny dude but Whenever he's talking about boozing and going out, he was, he just talks about getting fucked up. He's almost like a a Doug Stanhope version of a get fucked up guy. Do you know what I mean? Doug Stanhope, would you trust him if he brought out his drink? Maybe if he maybe if he you know had a brand of cigarettes, I'd trust drug Doug Stanhope. But booze wise, he just wants to get fucked up. So I don't know. It's hard to kind of make that shit work, to be honest. I'm not gonna lie. The the Burt Crash and the Tom Segura one, that's the one that's a real fucking cash grab. Because number one, Bert doesn't really drink that much vodka, really. When he, you know, he obviously talks about Tito's and shit, but whatever. He seems like a beer dude. And then number two, Tom Segura doesn't even drink that much, if ever. He always talks about how much of a light he is. So for those two guys to come up or to come out with their own brand of whiskey, that's really, really shameful, you know? Really shameful for them to come out of their version of whiskey. Like you'd imagine with them being two bears, maybe they could have brought out a burger. Maybe they could have brought out a, a shake, some sort of like alternative milk thing, whatever, right? You'd imagine that would have made more sense than them bringing out a fucking vodka. Like, come on. What what does Tom Segura know about fucking booze? Do you know what I mean? Come on. That's never been his brand. Never, ever, ever been his brand. So that was a real fucking shameless fucking cash grab. But you know what? It is what it is. It is what it blood clot is. So I was checking the stuff online 
And I happened to stumble across this really funny clip, courtesy of the new Rory and Moore podcast channel that features Joe Budden and his cast of old um, podcast co-hosts in Rory and Moore talking about P Diddy, which is really funny because they were talking about Diddy and these parties here, obviously before everything transpired. And Joe is really letting it be known that it's an industry worst kept secret that Diddy likes to party. And sometimes if you go and party at his house, the drinks that you go and drink there probably aren't the same drinks you drink at home because they've been laced with something, right? According to a document also I've been reading, um, especially the court cases and sorry, the lawsuit that's been put into court, um, they're alleging that Diddy likes to like spike his drinks, right? It's a thing that they all do. Um, and it sounds quite common in the States. So I don't know if you guys can co-sign this. It sounds quite common in the States that people will sprinkle a bit of MDMA in their fucking booze and shit. It seems quite common. In the UK, people don't really do that. People just take the fucking drugs to the face. But it seems like you guys like to fucking sprinkle your, your fucking drugs in your drink. Drink your alcoholic drink plus with the drugs inside it and get super, super turned. So I guess it's something that Diddy allegedly likes to do also. So this clip is really funny because it obviously speaks about it being an open secret. And it's funny because more so funny because Diddy now is, sorry, because Joe now is very protective or is very coy and very careful not to, you know, talk too bad about Diddy because their relationship has obviously changed since the time that he recorded this. Um, so it makes this revelation or it makes how he opened his talking about Diddy even funnier when you think about how he refuses to actually talk about Diddy nowadays. Let's play the clip so you can see what these guys are saying. Oh, good night, fam. You already know what, what, let's just use our imagination for a minute. Some of the, some of the executives that helped start music, you know how they some party. Some of the nastiest. You know, you know, how, you know how they party. Yeah. Have you ever partied with some of them? You know how they party. Oh, but I, we caught them when they were already like millionaires. So it's a different party. I'm not when they was on a on a come up though. I'm not gonna lie. Forget the rape. Take out the rape and all the abuse stuff. I would love to party with Diddy. Take away the rape, all the abuse stuff, all the heinous stuff. Take away all that shit. I would love to fucking rail some pink cocaine. <laughs> and some fucking motley spiked champagne and Ciroc with Diddy. I swear to God, take away all the fucking rape and all the harassment. Give me a fucking plate of pink cocaine and Diddy with my glasses on and a fucking Cartier or a Hermes gold plated straw, um, Hermes plate, um, Chanel fucking flutes, right? Like, and I would love to fucking party with Diddy. Just don't rape me, right? Don't jack me off without fucking asking. Ask me first before you jack me off whilst I'm DJing. <laughs> but I would love it. I would love to party with him. It would probably be so much fun. Listen, fam. They was doing some sick Oh, yeah, yeah. Sick <laughs> shit. Listen, when I came in this game and some of them millionaire executive niggas, you know, when you, when you come in new and, and, and you hot, they got to they show it to you. <laughs> they, gotta oh, yeah. say, they gotta show you what's going on hey yo pause when you come in new and you're hot that's a hell of pause isn't it? they gotta show you while going what are they gonna show you that's what i need to get that's the levels i need to get fuck hanging around with joe rogan fuck hanging around with shane gillis fuck being with ari shafir fuck being with all the bros fuck all that shit i want to be with diddy and all the fucking whores that's what i want to be on i want to fucking lose my family i want to lose custody of my kids I want to, I want my fucking freedom to be on the line. That's where I want to party. I want to party it to the edge. You know what I mean? I want to, I want to party to the edge. I want to rim. That's what I want to do. I want to rim party. Rim party me, bro. Like push me to the fucking edge. That's what I want to be. Fair <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> some of that shit. I was like, whoa. <laughs> you giving it up this what way? What is happening here? Yeah, life. <laughs> It's too fucking big in a pool. <laughs> <laughs> and whose pool is this? Oh, I love that. Where am I? Yeah. My God. Why am I covered in cocaine? I don't do cocaine. I had all, but this night I will. <laughs> Have you ever done drugs on a night that you didn't want to do them? Not really. I'm not that kind of guy. If if I'm in a mood, I'll do it. If I'm not in a mood, I'm not doing it. But I'm not gonna do it. If anything. I'm a little bit of a contrarian in that regard. I hate to do stuff when people are doing stuff around me just to kind of fit in. 
if everybody's drinking, I'll just not drink just because I want to be the only fucking super sober, fucking super serious, fucked out guy in the corner. If everyone's getting fucked up, I will also be the super serious, you know, guy in the corner who's mysterious. No one, no one knows if I'm going to kill everybody in the room or if I'm just there to party or sell drugs, right? Like, I don't know. I don't ever let peer pressure ever get the, you know, ever have its hold on me in the slightest. Um, you know, I kind of come in with my own mood. I leave with my own mood, but I'm not gonna ever be in a room and like, oh, because everyone's doing something. I'm like, I, I just have to give in. I just have to. It's like, nah, man, fuck that shit. Because you have to do it. Yeah, you do. You peer, do. Peer pressure. You yeah. have to do it. You have to do it. It's probably good cocaine in that yeah. circle. Oh yeah. Well, that's the problem too. Yeah. That's the problem too. It was 2000. You, you go to somebody else and start start off. Uh, think y'all got the same vices in there? You go grab the Pino. <laughs> grab the Pino, just start chugging it back like you do in your house, but that person's rich, so the Pino <laughs> affects you differently. <laughs> the Pino is... That's, that's true, though. It does... When you go to people that have monies, houses, and especially booze, like stuff like red wine, you might drink a brand of red wine, especially from your local shopping center, that's really cheap, right? Or that's within your budget. But then you go to someone else's house and they actually, you know, spend a decent amount on like nice red wine and it actually tastes like fucking Ribena, right? And it fucking, you don't realize it because it's so fucking nice, but it fucking gets you spun. Um, that's a real eye opener. You're like, fuck, people live actually good. Some people are actually spending 200 pounds plus on a bottle of red. You're like, fucking hell. It's like, I remember seeing this um, post someone on Instagram of uh, LeBron James because he's really into his red wine and somebody basically I think it was an Instagram page that kind of catalogues you know rich rich and celebrities celebrities and rich people's wine choices right like looking at their bottles in the background and somebody cropped out one of the bottles on the table um you know at fucking LeBron James's house when he was eating and I think it was like a casual bottle of wine they were having with their dinner <laughs> and I think it was like seven thousand pounds or something and they had like three on the table like seven grand on a bottle of red wine. You're like, fuck, bro. Some people just live differently. So I don't I don't even fucking make seven grand a month, let alone, you know, have one bottle of fucking red wine on my table at seven grand. That's fucking wild. Coke. I don't want <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yo, I don't wanna I don't wanna name drop, but I will. When we went for New Year's Eve to Puff Grave and he gave us that, that wine. Goodness, don't do yeah. that shit hit. It's a mistake. I think I was hallucinating. It's a mistake. <laughs> Don't take I was drinking it like wine. I was drinking it like barefoot. Like it was the shit we get. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It wasn't kung like fu it was girl. No, it, was <laughs> it wasn't kung fu girl at all. Just have two. Yeah, I was done. You got barefoot afterwards. <laughs> uh, I might have got ass naked when everyone was in suits <laughs> and jumped in the pool. That sounds sound like a dome night bus. <laughs> I need that pee. See? Yeah, anybody get ass naked jump in the pool, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one hesitates. Oh, all right. All right. Good word. <laughs> Fine, just me. Nah. Everyone, yeah. So basically, the puffy thing was an open secret. Um, a part of me also just thinks that, you know, it's just the inevitable end of being a party guy. I'm thinking about the scene that I was involved in in Dawson and Shoreditch and shit. I think of all the guys and girls I was doing fucking drugs with and drinking copious amounts of booze with. Most of us have really tapered off. Most of us have become quite boring, myself included. We don't even go out that much. And the ones that are still on it, who are still going out every weekend, who are still getting fucked up, they're really the people that are losers. They're the ones that we kind of look, you know, kind of feel bad for because they haven't really let go of that period of life. Because I feel like that whole like party monster thing is somewhat similar to what Bert does, right? That whole thing that Bert does where he tries to relive his youth, he's stuck in a state of like, you know, um, where he's kind of like reliving his you know, college years. He's almost like this adult frat boy persona thing. That's just as redacted as being the guy that's still going to the clubs when you're like mid thirties, late thirties, forties, early forties, mid forties. You know what I mean? That's like, you have to really hang it up, man. Like you need to really leave it alone. Um, especially if you're still going out on that same type of tempo. If you maybe wind it in and you treat the clubs as like an adult daycare, cool. But if you're going there and you're trying to fucking, you know, you're trying to fuck basically 18 to 21 year olds and you're trying to compete with all these other kids and you're trying to still be on that time, you just look like a bit of a loser. So it's hard to really make that shit work. So maybe even if Diddy didn't do anything illegal, even if he didn't do anything criminal, even if he didn't do allegedly the grape stuff, maybe it was always going to end this way. Because I think we, we've all heard the term of like, oh, um, what's that thing called? 
we've all heard the term of people we've all, we've all heard that saying that people say where you should try and leave the party before the party leaves you type of thing right i think that's one of those type of things so maybe this is always going to happen to diddy one way or the other either way um i find it hilarious when people say this sort of stuff because clearly it was a bit of an open secret and no one wanted to fucking hide it nobody wanted to fucking hide it moving on from this one yo big up Koila and uche i see you in the chat big up my cheese much love to you guys always bang your fucking chest big up uche and Koila in the stream chat nice to see ya nice to see ya to see ya nice okay let's fucking move on so yuri had the crash out of all crash outs recently i'm sure most of you have seen the epic epic crash out where yuri happens to find this video of his girlfriend riley doing a youtube video nearly 10 years ago with a couple of her high school friends for some reason yuri doesn't react too well to it because he gets threatened he feels insecure even though one of the guys in the video is clearly gay or on that fucking spectrum it still fucking affects him weirdly because in his mind he felt like he should know everything about his girlfriend prior to them when they were together and the fact that he's finding it out live on stream he feels like it's a betrayal i know it sounds redacted i know it sounds like some pussy insecure bitch shit which it clearly is but that's how yuri felt anyway long story short the internet saw the video of yuri reacting that way and crashing on his girlfriend he eventually ends up calling on the phone and berates her and mocks her and kind of just acts like a dick to her on person she then comes back home and they have another discussion on stream where he still tries to ridicule her and make himself sound right by gaslighting her and ridiculing her again and obviously everyone reacts to it and he gets absolutely destroyed moist critical destroyed him which is the most famous restream or well, the most famous reaction to him so far last time i checked it was at one point something million views crazy and a few other people also reacted to it and obviously he's been led to be quite embarrassed by the whole shebang now as a carry on to that he's still getting it from everybody all over the place right he got it from some of the no jumper hosts such as i think suspect and a few other people have been getting at him i think also brick baby also said something about him so yuri decided enough's enough you guys aren't going to talk shit to me anymore so yuri jumped on his podcast which is reconnected that he does with toke house phone and blasey and yuri said enough is enough don't play with my fucking name and he decided to insult the entirety of the new no jumper cast of characters and he called them all trash without any provocation so this is yuri the guy here right calling the no jumper staff at the moment trash for them having something to say about the way he crashed out on riley on stream let's play the clip like i wake up every day i'm working on the brand i'm like doing other shit like i'm not fucking worried about like what's going on at a, at a former place i didn't even used to sit and watch no jumper when i was on it so why the fuck would i be watching it and paying attention to every little thing now especially with the new terrible host they have <laughs> i'm just saying every like, single one of them i'm just saying oh, like yeah, the, you're just, popping it yeah you're on popping mode every so he says especially with the host they have right now every single one of them let's play that clip one more time see what yuri said attention to every little thing now especially with the new terrible host they have <laughs> i'm just saying every like, single one of them i'm just saying oh, like right, the, yuri's just, popping it yeah yuri's on popping mode so yuri is nervously grinding some weed because you know yuri needs weed in order to kind of calm his nerves he's one of those anxious nervous keyboard warrior types who has a lot to say behind his little you know sitting in his little throne streamer chair behind his little streaming setup he speaks like a bad man he speaks with big chest but he's frantically nervously grinding the weed in his little grinder to try and get it out in order for him to smoke so he can calm himself but he's still like every single one of them every single one of them right so it's a weird juxtaposition to see him nervously shaking and grinding his weed to settle his nerves but he's also talking with big chest and trying to put some pressure on the ex or the current sorry no jumper host at the moment so that's yuri saying what he's saying well guess what happened the no jumper host heard what yuri said they heard about it through uh, the fucking live chat when they were doing their live show and they didn't react to it too well as you can understand almighty suspect and sharp in particular heard what yuri had said about them in terms of them being horrible hosts and they decided to clap back via the no jumper live stream earlier on today so here as suspect and sharp 
make sure to let Yuri know that they heard what he said and they didn't like it. Here's them replying to Yuri's comments that all of them are trash host. That wasn't a bridge. Free like we knew. Oh, Mentally. Straight up, yeah. Poor Hold on, that nigga God donuts. By the way, this guy in the back here, I w I, I said it before, I would want to party with Diddy and do pink cocaine with Young Miami and get my fucking, you know, my little wee wee fucking sucked by some nondescript fucking IG baddie with a fucking BBL that's come straight from Colombia. And another person who I love to session with is this guy here. This guy here looks like he knows where to get the good perico. If you keep an eye on this guy here in the back, just keep an eye on him while they're talking about Yuri. Keep an eye on this guy and keep an eye on how much he moves, how much he twitches, how much he's fucking doing his little, you know, stop and click and pop and lock and shit in the background there. And you can tell he has a tasty, tasty eight ball or two in one of these very, very tight and small and mirror pocket denim jeans. In these Amiri jeans, these small pockets, you can definitely tell there's a couple of eight balls somewhere. Maybe in that little pocket there, because that's why usually, if I'm carrying eight balls, that's why I usually have my eight ball. In that little coin pocket there on your jeans, it's a nice little place for you to dig it out, put it in your hand, and then pop it back in again. So this guy looks like he knows where to get it from. So apart from Diddy, another person I have to session with is this young gentleman at the top. So keep an eye on this young gentleman as Suspect and Sharp talk about Yuri, and just keep, look at how he's moving and think to yourself, would you like to have a bump from him? Yes or no? I said, Almighty, Maggie Man dissed you because of what you said about Riley. Maggie but man. there's video proof of you saying the exact same shit to his face. Fake victim. Can you send us the link, God Donut, of what you're referring to? Because I want to see it. The, it's yeah, DM the, DM the link of um uh, of him saying, the uh, not him hating on me because I seen that. Again. Look at Put it in the video <laughs> proof of him saying the exact same thing, of, of me saying it to his face. He's Send me that. Look we want to see that. I'm, I'm sure. He had to be right here. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, send that. Send that. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure I caught the bitch hot when he was right here. Like, nigga, whatever I said, I'm good. Fuck. Bro, I'm uh -oh. not worried. Look, 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 look. This, this is what we gonna do. Uh -oh. She's a little dog. She's a cool-looking little chick. But I just, like I said, I base a chick off of the last nigga you fuck with. They tell me everything about you. Everything. Ooh. Or, or, or look at a Sharp is right there. Look at Sharp with his little pimp face. Look, yeah, his little legend face. Look, you can tell Sharp's living good, in it? You can tell no jumpers checks are clearing. Got the little pot belly. He's got the little auntie look about him, right? Sharp, auntie Sharp is being direct here he's letting it be known i tell you what church i judge a bitch by based on the last nigga she been with i tell you what church i tell you what church you know sharp knows sharp knows how to keep the bitches on the leash huh kill squad so i, I get him he's right here he's right as attracted that's the thing i said earlier before people are having so much sympathy for riley now because she's attractive that's basically the crux of it. If Riley wasn't attractive, people wouldn't have all this stuff to say about her. But I don't know. Would you really want to date Riley knowing that she lets fucking Yuri put his fingers in her fucking punane? That she lets fucking Yuri go down on her? Would you, is that really the kind of girl that you'd want to be with? A kind of girl that thinks Yuri's attractive in any kind of way or shape or form? A, guy, a, a woman that would let Yuri kind of ridicule and mock her online? I don't know. It doesn't. That's not the kind of person that would turn me on, you know? Big up fucking Sean DePaul. But I don't know what you guys think. Maybe I'm in the wrong here. Let's continue. Big up Sharp for that astute and very accurate observation. I'm just keeping it in the bag, gang. Besides <laughs> that, <laughs> besides that, look, 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 besides all of that, the nigga no, was talking you. about, listen, look, look, besides look, all of that, the nigga talk, was talking him. about look every no-jumper host up here don't do views. Yuri? Ooh, talk your shit for. When the fuck you ever did views in anything in your life that you ever did? That's true. Stop it. When have you ever, and I ain't never even seen You hear just in the background, outside the Fulcrum interview. That's a good point. When did he, when when did Yuri do anything in t that was noteworthy or no jumper, views-wise? Outside of being associated with um, Disconnected, right? Outside of being associated with House Phone and Blasey and shit. When did Yuri actually stand on his own two feet and, and hold it down and be like, yep, I'm an integral member of his fucking crew? It never happened. So he needs to, you know, he needs to mind these P's and Q's. Or maybe he can fire back. Maybe Yuri has proof that he was a big dog there. You don't know yet. Let's continue with this. You're not shit. 
And Yuri, let's keep it a band, church. I ain't trying to say too much to you, but nigga, you're not fucking with me, dog. Stop. Stop playing with me by a long shot. He said every host. He said every host. He like, every come on, host. bro. They're like, not fucking with you. Nigga, when you say every host, you're putting everybody What are you in. talking about? Nigga. Come on, bro. Nigga said, hey, every ho, you could boy. fuck with my lowest year, but this nigga, you couldn't fuck with my last nut. He what do you his, do? He oh, arguing bro. with his bitch on right now, though. I'm gonna get caught that. Hold on. Let's, well, let's go look up Ted Talk. He with you in views. That's when he lost in real life any motherfucking way. Well, let's go look up what he do. Word. Because stop it. I would sit on stream for 30 days. Stop it. Stop it. Nigga, that cat. Heard what Sharp said there. Wish I would stay on stream for 30. Look at look how disgusted Sharp looks. Sharp can't believe a dweeb like Yuri is even talking his direction. A dweeb like Yuri is even breathing his direction. I wish I would stay on, on stream for 30 days, church. I wish a nigga would. 30 days on stream, nigga. I wish a nigga would. Uh, he's not having it. He's not fucking having it. How dare you speak to me this way? And he's right. Yuri does have to do some very deplorable things to make his money. To pay his rent, to support his family, you know, to keep his weed supply, you know, um, never ending. He has to be on stream for 30 plus days. He has to fake the numbers. He has to add arbitrarily numbers and time onto his fucking, you know, the amount of days that he's on there and fake the numbers to keep the fucking streams on. He has to go and harass vape employees and shit. He has to do some pretty deplorable things to keep the lights on. Would you do those things? Let's continue. 3k views in 11 days stop it let's go check what the almighty show did on my yes, channel GK. 3k views in 11 days let's go see what the almighty show did when i did it and my very first episode i did the almighty show my shit got 20,000 views the very first episode stop talking to me mm. what you, and that's on my own channel we're not gonna act like i don't have some of the most viral clips up here we're not gonna do that either what are you talking about bro and you feel me i don't i've been trying to i've been this guy is yuri by the way um what you call it you guys, little, what's your name? What's your, what's your guy's name? Lit Drip. This is Yuri here. This guy. They're responding to this clip. So if you just joined in now, those guys on No Jumper, this clip here, are responding to this particular clip where Yuri says the host currently on No Jumper are all trash because they said something about his girlfriend, so he replied back. So let's it one more time. Up every day, I'm working on the brand. I'm like doing other shit. This is Yuri here. That's Yuri. Like, I'm not fucking worried about like what's going on at a, at a former place i didn't even used to sit and watch no jumper when i was on it so why the fuck would i be watching it and paying attention to every little thing now especially with the new terrible host they have <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> every like, single one of them i'm just saying oh, like right, yuri's popping it yeah yuri's on popping so that's yuri saying that every single one of these new hosts on no jumper are terrible so the hosts of no jumper are rightfully replying these are the hosts mostly suspect and sharp who know yuri most out of these two out of these four because the rest of them are quite new but these ones have been there when yuri was there let's continue bury you this whole time you know i'm not gonna go too hard on you and her it's not really a, a big deal but don't <laughs> act like ah nobody over here no jump review yeah, all the whole crazy, crap. stop like... it you were one of the worst hosts ever <laughs> what's entertaining about yuri <laughs> <laughs> the only thing you was only doing was, was being the nerd contrast on house phone and their fly and shit. Having a cool oh, that's actually true. Suspect is actually a lot more observant than you'd give him credit for. He said Yuri was only relevant because of house phone and Blasey. Without them two, no one would have given a shit about him. But he was relevant because he was the nerdy contrast between the cool guys that were Blasey and house phone. Oh, that's got a sting, man. That's got to hurt. A little bitch. Stop. That was really it. And we're really going to look at it for what it is. Why is niggas, he here? Niggas fuck with you Stop. for your bitch. Why do you think they keep trying to break him up from her? That's all. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Sharp is laying it thick. Sharp is saying people only fuck with Yuri because of his bitch. Let's look at his bitch, actually. What's, what's her Instagram? It's Riley, right? It's a right. Is it? It's, it's Riley G. There we go. That's her Instagram. Sharp is saying people only fuck with Riley. Fuck with Yuri because of fucking Riley. Imagine that. Imagine people only liking you as a man because of your girlfriend. And they don't like your girlfriend because she's got a fucking an amazing brain. It's because they want her to give them amazing brain. They only fuck with you because they want to fuck your girlfriend. Have you guys ever had that issue? By the way, let me know in the stream chat. People in the stream chat, can you let me know? Have you ever been with an actual baddie? Like a, a woman 
that a lot of men would be attracted to. How is it pressure wise? Is it a lot to deal with? <laughs> when you know if you stay in the toilet for too long at a house party, you might come back and she might not be there. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell me the stream chat it must be quite scary to be with a baddie like an actual baddie like <laughs> and not the bad it's i think it's easier to be with a baddie that's kind of rude like a mean girl i think being with a hot mean girl is easy because she's probably going to give those guys dust she probably enjoys telling guys to fuck off but being with a baddie who's like like riley who's nice she seems like a nice person she doesn't mind having a conversation or saying hi that is really going to test your... If you're an insecure person like like Yuri, it's going to test a lot of your fucking... Your resolve. You know what I mean? So they're saying people only... F she's got a lot of Yuri on her, on her Instagram, though. Bless her. She's a really... She's a good girlfriend. She's got a lot of Yuri on her Instagram. She makes it very clear. This is my boyfriend. He's all over Instagram. Look, he's all over it. That's fucking good. Because a lot of hot girls, I throw over, so most of you knows, a lot of attractive girls on Instagram don't show their boyfriends on their feed they kind of keep them secret like a kid you know what i mean they keep them secret like a kid but she's got yuri all over instagram when they start dating yeah i guess these are the young pictures let's not go down there because i don't want to be put on a list but when you continue up here there's loads of pictures of her with yuri when they started dating so clearly fuck you know he's so ugly isn't it god damn it bro the face cards like her one is not declining. His one is always declining, isn't it? His face card is always on overdraft. Fuck, you know, look at his face. My guy looks like... That's the thing. If you've got... What do you do if you've got a baddie and you're a guy and you're not that good looking? Do you dye your beard? Do you get, like, new piercings to make yourself look hot? Or do you just, like, settle into your ugliness and like, and, and you like the contrast? Because Jesus, bro, compared to her, he looks like a thumb. And again, he's not even that bad looking as a dude. But because she looks the way that she does, the contrast is fucking crazy. He doesn't. He looks. He looks quite good here. To be fair, here looks. Here there's a bit of parity. Here they look quite. You know, they look on a similar level. I think here. But still, Jesus Christ, bro. Doesn't you know what's you know you, you know what's bad about this, right? You know what's bad about this. And the guys in the stream chat will know. He doesn't look like a threat. Like, if you were out and you saw them out and you wanted to holler at her, she probably would tell you no anyway, but you would feel confident enough to go and, uh, and just inquire because you wouldn't feel like he could do anything to you, number one. And you never know, you could have a shot. Imagine if you bump into them while they're having their arguments, while he's ragging on her and being rude to her in public, and you just come along and be like, hey, let me show you how to, let me show you how, to, let me show you how it is to actually treat a woman properly. Do you know what I mean? Let me show you what it is to be with like an actual real gentleman. You feel me? And make you feel like a princess. You know what I mean? Make you feel special and whatnot. You feel me? Huh? Hold my hand one second. Let me take you somewhere nice. And then boom, you're in the toilet. <coughs> you know what I mean? Like that that could that could be you. <laughs> with no threat of Yuri ever getting getting in touch with you. But look at that. Fucking hell, man. God bless Yuri, man. Must be fucking hard. In LA as well. In LA. In LA, Yuri looking the way he does, her looking the way that she does. Fucking hell, man. He's fucking, he's fucking fighting. He's fucking, he's fucking fighting. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's fucking, he's fucking, he's fucking, he's fucking, he's fucking big overhand rack. Do you know what I mean? He's fucking, he's fucking, he's fucking fighting. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucking fighting. Anyway, let's go back to this. All his comments ever are is trying to get him away from his niche. Facts. And eventually it'll work. Facts. <laughs> eventually it's going to work one day. We're good. We're good. I disagree with that. I think they're perfect for each other. I don't think Riley's ever breaking up with Yuri, and I think Yuri's ever leaving Riley. Let's see it. The boiling point's coming. I'm just saying. I don't ever like to say They are toxically suited. Every host up there. Don't yeah, do I that. I never got nothing to say about you, Church Nigga, Lido. better say except for Almighty, bitch. So you can say here, okay, huh? I don't even know that boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's not doing north numbers in anybody up here. No one. Why did he leave? He didn't leave. He got fired. Oh, he got fired. He got fired. Oh, he yeah, he did get fired. You know, the, the, the sad thing about you getting fired of no jumper. I think anyone that gets fired of no jumper, it's a bad look. But you, if you get fired for no jumper, you should probably get fired for having a clash with like Josh 
or for falling out with Adam 22 or something, maybe that's why you should, that's a good way to get fired. But if you get fired because you're not good at your job, it looks really terrible at you, on you because no jumper is not like, it's not like you're working for ESPN. Do you know what I mean? So if you get fired for like not upholding certain standards or like falling short of your, you know, of your, t like it's just, it just, you look terrible because, you know, it's a bit of a free for all in there. It's quite a relaxed environment. It looks like from the sounds of it. So if they fire you from no jumper, that's when you know you're fucking useless. So for Yuri to get fired, because I think he used to title the videos wrong and shit, that shows you that he was absolutely fucking useless. And then he lied and said, they're saying I got fired multiple times when I didn't. You went on your stream and said you got fired multiple times. What are you talking about? You, you, you forgot his receipts for all this shit? <laughs> what are you receipts, talking about, bro? A video I was not go being in. recorded 45 minutes and y'all was a duo doing that shit on an iconic ass interview, nigga, with the... Wow, I didn't know that. Yuri forgot to record an interview they did for 45 minutes. That's the thing that I always felt to me that I never really understood. When I was, when I first got in to the, when I first started looking for jobs, right? When you're like 18 or something, when you leave uni, I never had an inferiority complex. I never had imposter syndrome because I knew that some of my friends, my close friends had jobs and I knew they were fucking redacted. Like I knew these people, they're my actual friends. I've been at their houses, they've been at my houses, I've met their mums and shit. I know these guys are fucking dumb. So if these guys can get jobs, I can get a job also. I never felt inadequate, never, because I knew people out there in the workforce are way dumber than I am. It's just a waiting game. Unfortunately, when you're looking for a job, it's not like um, an exact science sometimes you, you'll wait for like a year and all of a sudden you get four offers at once sometimes you wait for two years and you might get one amazing offer at the end but there's no exact science about it but you should never lose hope just you know keep the momentum going keep applying and shit keep your head up and eventually you'll get it but don't think that you're not getting it because you're not smart enough because there are people out there like yuri who had a job at you know a pretty decent place like no jumper and he was working there all he has to do was press fucking record and pause and stop and switch cameras pretty easy job and one day he forgot to press record for 45 minutes. <laughs> so if he can get a job at No Jumper, you can get a job at ESPN. Just be patient. Uh, Blue Girls Club. I had all the bitches, nigga. We ran for 45 minutes. She had the whole video fucked up. Jesus mm, Christ. We had to start over. 45 minutes. Of the I remember it. Nigga pissed me the fuck off. I remember it. Come on, bro. Let's, Let's not, not act like we bro. So I think he's saying that Yuri and and Riley were like a dumb and dumber duo. That makes sense though. I think they have matching IQs. That's why I said they're going to be together forever. I think people who think they're going to split up, I think you guys are stupid. I think they have, they're very well suited to each other. They have matching IQs. Um, they both kind of enable each other with some of the toxicity. So that's why it probably works out. I don't think they're going to break up anytime soon, to be honest. Most girls, the way that she got embarrassed online with that other crash out, they would have left already. The fact that she hasn't left is proof that they are oddly well suited together i think so sometimes that's what happens you get like a toxic couple that you know they have their bad moments but i'm sure when it's good it's fucking good so i don't think they're gonna break up anytime soon and i'm rooting for them because i like it for the content <laughs> yep. say something else say something else and i'm going to no problem king bayo keep your fucking head up bro i've been there keep your fucking head up keep on grinding keep applying and again unfortunately job application is just a momentum game the, like unfortunately and I, I, i'm sure you have the same saying in america but when you when you're waiting for the bus the moment you leave is a moment suddenly four come do you know what I mean so just be patient it's a waiting game it's a momentum game eventually it will swing back your way but don't ever for one moment during that time think that you're inadequate because i guarantee you there are people way dumber than you are <laughs> way dumber than you are making good money working good jobs so if they can do it you can do it that's all it is all you have to do in life basically I've, I've i figured it out all you have to do in life forget trying to be super smart just try and be less dumb than the next person that's all you have to do forget trying to be super smart super charismatic super intelligent super worldly knowledgeable nah just be less dumb than the person next to you just be less lazy than the person next to you and you're okay you're perfectly okay. You don't have to do that much. We've got proof of it. Look at Brendan Shaw. He's got seven cars. <laughs>
<laughs> he's got a mansion in LA and he legitimately might have double digit IQ. If he can do it, we can do it. Okay? Keep your chin up. Tell how your bitch really got up here. <laughs> Big. Say Sheesh. something else. She's a bag of chips. I'm, I'm going to spare you. I don't give a fuck if it's true or not. Oh. It is. By the way, this they are insinuating about the rumor. The rumor is that Riley first went first was the rumor is that Adam Twenty Two fucked Riley, which is Yuri's girlfriend. The suggestion is that Riley was a fan of No Jumper before she met Yuri. She met Yuri at No Jumper. She goes to a No Jumper pop up meet and greet thing. They get fucking pally pally with the Adam Twenty Two. And it, you know, it extends to them exchanging Bollywood fluids. Whether it's true or not is anyone's guess, but it's a funny meme. Or it's a funny troll. For sure true, yeah, nigga. It is true. It's for sure what true. The first time niggas lay eyes on that bitch was where? All right, and, and who was so at the what pop -up? we talking about? Pop-up for who? And who was at the pop-up? Okay. All right, then. So what we talking about? I don't fuck this bitch. Nigga, I don't fuck this bitch. Keep going. I don't fuck this bitch. Now I know. Keep going. I don't fuck your bitch. You better chill, bro. <laughs> I think this guy's got the good coke, man. I want to be his friend. I think this guy's got the good perico, man. He's got them good flakes, man. He's got them good flakes, fam. No repress, fam. That shit flaky like cornflakes. Big up NJ Ranger. Two guys running from a bear in the woods. One guy says, I'd how we're going to outrun this bear. His boy turns to him. I don't got to outrun a bear. I just got to outrun you. Exactly, NJ Ranger. It's fucking exactly. It's fucking exactly. That's what you gotta do. Outrun the bear. <laughs> Tell him you better go start. For the record, <laughs> for the record, I don't think that's true at all. You better chill, nigga. You met your bitch from a pop up shop, nigga. Stop playing. I didn't say none of that, but nigga, say all that. Bro. I don't, I don't about me. Love the Riley slander. I don't think that any of that is true. But no, no, no. look, you catch strays. You catch strays when yeah. you with him. That's just yeah. what that is. Talking about bears. Do you guys remember this from Mystical? Do you guys remember this from Mystical? I make a motherfucker say, "Oh yeah, I'm cold as a lamb with no hair." If you ever see me fighting in the forest with a grizzly bear, help the bear. It is. Oh, it is. <laughs> hey, it's business. Hey, you guys remember that? Ever. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> I actually need to get that up. I need to get that up. Oh, that's fucking big up, Mystical. Great, great clip. Big up, Abe Martinez. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks, bro. Yes, you know how it is, brother. Thank you, Abe Martinez. Appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for being a part of this fucking fantastic stream. But do you guys remember that Mystical bar? Absolutely incredible bar from Mystical. Big up, Mystical. Let me get up on here on the fucking thing so you can watch it together because now this computer isn't fucked up and I can actually watch. I can actually mult multitask, you know what I mean? Multitask and actually watch my actual videos. So let's get this video up on here. Bear with me a second as I pull it up. This is a good one to check out. Um, big up, Mystical. Big up the legend that is Mystical, right? Do you guys remember this? Uh, big up, NJ Ranger for the hint as well about the bear thing because this reminded me immediately of this. This legendary fucking freestyle. Do you guys remember this? It's from years ago. Ye 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 years ago. I make a motherfucker say, oh yeah! I'm cold as a lion with no hell. If you ever see me fighting in the forest with a grizzly bear, help the bear! Cause that bitch gonna need it. And I'm home and greedy. Give me that goddamn porridge. But I ain't even gonna eat it. I fell out with fall. Why? Fucking spring. I got into a summer, cause I told her that the winter be coming. <laughs> I had a fight with lightning. Yeah, I kicked his ass. I sent him home on the lightning boat. I ducked the flash, but I got a tan. We come together like the birds and the bees and the trees and the leaves and the pots and the pans. But we always fight like cats and dogs and roses and ray cans. I said, what's happening, my man? Know what I'm saying? What's happening, my man? Giant oh, did a mystical get done for rape? Mystical? Didn't he get done for like mad rapes, like seven of them or some shit? Yeah, there we go. Oh shit. Mystical was on that fuck shit, innit? Mystical be arranged for rape on other charges. Oopsie. 
Anyway, let's go back to the bear shit. One more time for the bear shit. <laughs> One more time for the bear shit. I make a motherfucker say, oh yeah! I'm cold as a lion with no hair. If you ever see me fighting in the forest with a grizzly bear, help the bear! Cool, help the bear. Let's go back to this clip. Let's watch it now. No interruptions. So, ADHD brain. <laughs> That's straight hey, up. What it is, this is. I got it against mean? Riley. Sorry, Riley, but you catch a shot but, but today. But you, but your nigga oh, decided you to come down the streets and blow the windows out of the house. So, nigga, we coming to your house. We about to blow them motherfuckers out. Fuck you and mean. I, I don't give a fuck if you All this fair and love and war, Josh. Straight we don't give a fuck up. about none of that shit. Fuck that bitch and him. Straight fuck up. you mean, nigga. We all know that. <laughs> At this fuck point. you mean, nigga. Ooh. If she a lame bitch, give it a lame nigga. Some pussy out of the way. She cool as hell. I'm not about shit now. She cool as hell. But we just said and him. We just said that. How can you say fuck her and him and then say, nah, nah, she's cool, she's cool. <laughs> big up uh, <laughs> big up Hellcat for making that clear. <laughs> exactly. You just said fuck her and now you're saying she's cool. What? <laughs> we got to judge a bitch uh, uh, of her past niggas. But think about this though. Think about me, fuck. Yeah, you know how it is, Young Old Vibes. We're going to play R. Kelly, Gary Glitter. Who else are we going to play in the fucking scheme of sickos? I'm sure Cosby's got a tape. I'm sure Cosby's got a mixtape. Cosby must have put out some R&B or disco record, I'm sure. When he was fucking feeling invincible, he must have put out some sort of like bop. He might have a Chicago house fucking tune, right? No way back. You're coming home. No way back. <laughs> You're not waking up. I put the shit in your drink. Right? He must have something. Funky ass niggas that sit in their room stinking like that, talk about us all day. I gotta give it to Yuri at least. At least he said it on camera. Five Ooh. niggas that be hiding. Can't no niggas who's in the shower Pro. tell me shit. And not yeah, a man. motherfucking I, I, thing. And they don't change his Oh, yeah. I just saw I just saw a little coke. I just saw a coke on MDA Joel Wiggle there. Do you see that Coke MG, MDMA Joel Wiggle? I know that wiggle. I know that little jaw wiggle. Look at the guy in the back of the blue hat. Look at him. Yeah, talk about us all day. I gotta give it to you. At least, at least he said it on camera. Five Ooh. niggas that be hiding. Hey, no niggas who's in the shower tell me shit. And not yeah, a motherfucking thing. <laughs> Sitting in their room stinking like that. Talk about it. For those of you that have done the drug ass, you know what that jaw is. Look at that jaw. Look at that jaw. Look at where that jaw is. Look at that jaw. Either he's mewing or he's enjoying the taste of the MDMA. The ecstasy. The drugs are hitting, sir. Can you see my lips aren't moving when I'm talking? It's the straight chin talk. Straight chin talk, all right? Straight chin talk. That's what it is. <sighs> Day. I gotta give it to Yuri at least. At least he said it on camera. Five Ooh. niggas that be hiding. Hey, no niggas who's in the shower Ooh, tell me shit. That shit was good. Thing. <laughs> and they don't change his You got drugs. maggots in your bed. You said you don't shower day. Wow. Yuri's got maggots in his bed. Yuri's got maggots in his bed. Yeah. That's next level white boy shit. Does it, yeah, Yuri wants his people that doesn't believe in showering every day. He believes that the body's natural oils and whatever nonsense, you know, gets rid of dirt. Like, that's some, that's some sick shit. Hey, Lee. We Imagine living with your girlfriend and not showering every day. You, you go home and you don't change your underwear. You, you said it. You said it. You went on a whole. Hey, why did you get fired? What was it? A whole vacation? <laughs> what was it? A whole vacation? <laughs> <laughs> he went on a whole vacation and didn't change his drawers? Nigga. Without the voice, uh, Ice Poseidon. Man, stop. Ice it. Poseidon. You hear what they said? He went on vacation for a week and didn't change his underwear. And called him out and said, bro, you haven't showered or brushed your teeth the entire time since you've been here. He's driving in the car with you. <laughs> Come on, what bro. are you talking about? The fact that y'all upset over Yuri saying one thing. At, what you don't, I don't give a fuck if it's any nigga saying one thing. I'm saying something. Good. I don't give a fuck if it's Yuri. I don't give a fuck if it's the president. Like, nigga, don't do that. 
I don't give a fuck. At, I don't pick and choose. When have I not went in on any nigga who ever said my name? The point, good point. I believe upset is just kind of overrated. That, that word upset. Stop it. I'm not upset. I just wanted to reply. Don't say nothing about no no host up there. Yeah, no Stop host. It. You are the bullshit. worst host here ever, nigga. He ain't talking about pimping. He ain't talking, talking about none of that. Talking about Don Charles. He's, we're not talking about what that. What are you talking bro. about? That has nothing fucking to work. Yeah, exactly, King Bayo. Exactly, King Bayo. King Bayo says, no, nah, I feel like it means Riley ain't sharing either. That's what I mean when I say, and I agree with Sharp in that regard, as attractive as Riley is, you have to look at somebody a bit funky like this when their boyfriend is when their boyfriend is Yuri, and you also have to look at a girl like this a bit funky, no matter how good she looks, you have to look at her a bit funky when she lives with a guy who only showers once a week. If he's only showering once a week, how often is she, if she's showering then? Because I don't know about you, but most girls who are really clean or have good hygiene, they don't like you touching them if you're not clean, no matter what you are to them. I don't know about you guys, but most of the girls I've been with, if they're really into their hygiene, right? If they like to look very cute and presentable and shit, if you haven't washed or if you haven't even washed your hands, they don't like you touching them. So if this woman likes to live with this guy, sleep in the same bed as this guy, despite him not changing his drawer in a week, what does that say about... That's the thing that I'm thinking now, which I agree with Sharp. I actually think it actually looks worse on Riley than it does on Yuri. Because if Yuri decides it's his personal lifestyle choice, that he doesn't want to shower every day, he doesn't want to change his underwear, that's him. If he doesn't want, he doesn't believe in washing his hands, that's him. Cool. But then if you decide to stay with somebody in that's like that, you can't then get offended when people judge you based on his hygiene standards or way of life or whatever it may be. It actually looks worse on you because then people start questioning, is this all just like cosmetic shit? Are you just putting paint on your face to look a certain way, but underneath all this shit, you actually stink? Like, are your pits like, you know, all this shit, you know, is there like stuff coming out of your pits when you walk by? Is there like, you know, fumes? Is, is, is it like a car exhaust and shit? That's kind of billowing out there, these sort of smoke pods and stuff when you walk by. Are you the type of person that has to walk with your fucking arms to the side and you can't lift your hands up and say hi to your friend from afar? Because if you do, you're going to fucking, you know, make birds in the sky fucking drop out from the sky and shit. Like, what's going on there? That's the issue. That's the fucking issue. And I really agree with Sharp in that regard. Irk. That has nothing to do with, with either or, nigga. <laughs> All we saying is, nigga, don't say nothing about no host, nothing up here, nigga. You hey, hey, go take a shower. Go do, thank you. Go right. change your draw. Because yeah, I shower. can't argue with a nigga that get, get maggots and they be. Go change exactly. the history. She exactly. ain't say your no, name. Cut. She ain't had to. Am I a host up here or not, bitch? J Cat. fuck Ooh. is you talking about? You have to say my name. Am, am, I, am I a no jumper <laughs> host or not? I want to talk. I want to talk to the. I want to talk to people like that. Can I talk to people like that? Is that possible? Can, this, can I start getting on shit and be like, what's good, bitch? What your bitch is saying? You want some Brendan news, bitch? You want me to talk about Brendan, bitch? You want me to talk about Rogan, bitch? You want to laugh at fucking Eric Griffin's fat ass, bitch? So I start doing that. I want to start, I want to start talking like that. I want to start talking like all aggressive. Urgh. Huh? You want some t fat K shit, bitch? Golden Hour, bitch? Huh? Y'all niggas in the stream chat, you better answer me, bitch. <laughs> I might start doing that. <laughs> On West Side Hoover, bitch. <laughs> Y'all fucking with the wrong one, bitch. <laughs> talking about, nigga, he said every host. <laughs> he didn't make an exception, nigga. So what are you talking about? He ain't making an exception. I'm not gonna make an exception, <laughs> bitch. What are you talking about, nigga? Talking about? Stop it. Stop it. Nigga. <laughs> clown. The fuck? Shit. Anyways, yeah, bro. Nigga, just keep say anything else. Not sharing And I'm going to bleed it some more, nigga. Josh can't save you. We know what's up with your bitch. <laughs> we know what's up with your bitch, nigga. <laughs> your bitch came for the pop-up, nigga. Next. Nigga, and popped up your with you. And it looks like to me, she's <laughs> almost ready to pop out that bitch. part. You <laughs> did. But we'll save that for the next episode. We're going to save it for the next <laughs> nigga. Next. Don't right, say nigga. shit about me, nigga. <laughs> Nigga. No cap. Now no let's get into this, man. Type shit. Oh, hold on, hold on. Five, five dollars. Yuri left because of sexual comments. Adam, that's a lie. That's, that's a lie. Super lie. That's a lie. He almost got fired because she was still working here after he, uh, after the fact. Correct. When she, I'm glad they said this. I'm glad they said this because I don't, I don't, I can't lie. This is one of the things that I've hated the most about Yuri from afar. 
when Yuri was at No Jumper, his girlfriend Riley was also working at No Jumper. Riley got fucking done over, probably worse than Yuri. If I remember correctly, this is my shoddy memory of No Jumper lore in history. If I remember correctly, Riley got fired from No Jumper as like out of the blue from her recollection or from her account. She said something like she went up to Josh and Adam and said something like, hey, I'm looking to make more money. I need to make more money because this job at the moment isn't paying me enough. So I want to do some other things outside of No Jumper. So again, she's a bit dumb, a bit naive. She told her employees, hey, I want to look for another job. You shouldn't ever do that. If you want to make more money outside of your actual job, again, word to the wise, I'm sure most of you guys know this, but you never ask permission always ask forgiveness so if you're working a current job at the moment and you want to make a bit of money on the side a little part-time gig just go and do work the part-time gig never ask your job for permission because if you ask them for permission number one they'll stop you or they'll convince you not to do it but don't do it just do it anyway so riley didn't do that she asked them for permission they told her no riley don't go and do this other thing because i think she was trying to get into hairdressing or something right um adam turned to and just told her no don't do that don't worry, we'll just pay you more. We'll give you like a raise and give you more responsibility. They did that. Then I think a week later, unfortunately for Riley, that's when all the shit kicked off. And at AD, um, T-Rail, everyone, all those guys left. I think that's when it happened. So the, the week after she got the raise or whatever, that's when all that shit kicked off. And then to cut cost and save money, they started firing other people. So all those guys left and Josh and Adam started firing other people to cut cost. And one of the people they fired was riley when riley got fired in that fashion which i think is a pretty bullshit way right imagine getting a raise and being told that you're an integral part of the team a week before and then you get fired for things that don't involve you that should be an annoyance if i was yuri i would have left with my girlfriend in solidarity yuri didn't do that because yuri was a bit of a bum at that time and didn't really have his own streaming career set up he kind of felt a bit nervous and a bit worried about leaving so he stayed even though his girlfriend got fired from the same platform and he got rightfully kind of, you know, um, called out for it online. And then of course, later on, he then ends up having to leave himself or he ends up kind of getting told to leave. I don't know what actually ended at the end, but that's the actual narrative. It's not as if like, you know, he stood up for his girlfriend when Adam said that racist stuff. And also that comment that he made, because I think Yuri's running with this narrative that Adam 22 said something sexual about his girlfriend. Adam only said, and again, I don't like Adam. I think Adam's a piece of shit also. But to be fair to Adam, Adam only said that shit about Riley because Yuri said something about him first. I forgot what he said, who he said it about. Adam was only replying back, clapping back, quote unquote. So Yuri makes it seem like Adam22 did it without provocation, went on their stream and left a comment that was inappropriate about Riley. No, he was actually replying to what Yuri said to him. That's the actual truth. He's still doing it. You sure? She was going first and he still stayed. She she was fired and he was still here. Exactly. So that completely kills your argument. Exactly. How do you leave because of sexual arguments and Riley left and he stayed? Exactly. Stop it. Mm. He left because he did some shit where he fucked up and he was fired. Plain and simple. Simple. Imagine getting fired multiple no times. So yeah. embarrassing. So Yuri got fired for no jumper multiple times, the same way House Phone fucked Lena. Adam 22's wife multiple times before they got together. Multiples is the day is the word of the day at No Jumper. Come on, bro, niggas not. Let's be real. You're not bring. You didn't quit. You're not bringing nothing to this table over here. So they let your ass go, bro. Let's, let's be real. It was it niggas was losing money giving you money. Cause what do you bring up? <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> niggas ain't into giving money away. Fuck is wrong with you. It's the reason niggas are still up here two years later, bitch. Clearly niggas bring some kind of value. Damn. Come on, no jump. Boy, what do you do? What do you do? You, the, no you the smallest bro on biggest bros, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you are the smallest bro on biggest bro. You're the biggest. Oh, yeah, he's getting demolished. Suspect going in on him. Look at suspect's face. Look at the concentration. Y'all the smallest bro on biggest bro, nigga. On West Side, who? You're the smallest bro on biggest bro. Look at the guy twitching as he got this sniff the eight ball. Oh, he's looking to do a bump. He's looking to do a bump. He's he's sniffing that last bit of. You know, on the side of his nose, he's getting a good hit in there. That's that. That's that. That's that mid sniff face. What's what's Sharp saying? Sharp is like, hmm, that's my son. Sharp looking like a proud dad, leaning back. Hmm, my son. What's Hellcat saying? 
What's Hellcat saying? Hellcat's just like, look, I ain't even involved. I ain't even involved. <laughs> this bitch, fool. Fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Fuck that guy. You feel me? I'll tell my nigga how small. Kill squad. I love it. Kill squad. I love it. Fuck that guy, dog. You feel me? Come on, dog. No cap, man. I'll fuck with this you. Nigga, I don't got no problem with Yuri nerd ass, but just don't say nothing about me. He really mad because niggas went in a little bit with all that goofy ass shit he did when he was chasing a nigga over his uh, over random bitches. Did you see that? Yeah. I went in on that nigga. Should have got <laughs> What's hurt up with you, bro? You almost got hurt. Very bad. You're a clown. That was clown shit. I'm, hey, I'm sorry, but bro. But that's what happens, though. He's any, he's walking anything for content, bro. Like, I don't like that shit. Wearing body cams and shit like yeah. you fucking police, nigga. Hey, you know that's a good point, you know. I'm not going to lie. That's actually a really good point about IRO streamers. They look like fucking body cams. That's actually a good point. There's some fed shit, in it? Being an IRO streamer and having, like, a GoPro strapped to your chest, that's some fed shit, isn't it? That's some piggy shit. That's some. That's some. That's some fucking five zero shit. Isn't it? <laughs> to rock it up to strangers and like trying to provoke them into their action. That is some like stop resisting shit. In it. That's some like stop resisting. Put your hands behind your back while he's got your fucking head in. A, he's got your got you in a headlock. That is some police ass shit. Sharp is actually quite right there. <laughs> IRO streamers out here with a body <laughs> with body cameras trying to get content. Oh, what I noticed, shit. fool, everybody at least no jumper talks about no jumper. Of course they do. It's like if it's niggas had out. so it's much, out. why you leave? You're gonna talk about it. If niggas had so much, what? What? What was that? What was that in incredible insight there, cocaine man? One more time. What do you say? You gotta know it's full. What we say? Fucking police, nigga. Oh, hey, you know what I noticed, shit. fool? No, Everybody at least don't jump or talk about no jump. No, no jump, fool. Do. It's like, if it's niggas had out. so it's much, out. Why you leave? You gonna talk about it? If niggas yeah, had fool. so much animosity here, and <laughs> look at that motherfucker beats his Michael Jackson. Yeah, little. <laughs> One more time. That was pretty good. I quite like that. I tell you what, fool. One more time. Hey, you know what I noticed, shit. fool? Everybody at least don't jump or talk yeah. about no jump. Of course they do. It's like, if niggas had so it's much, it's Why uh, you leave? You gonna talk about it? If niggas had so much animosity here and you felt some type of way about the nigga who company this is, why'd you work for him? Why did you let him sign your paychecks if you felt like niggas was all kind of kind of weird? If I'm so basically they're saying, because the insinuation here is that Yuri suggested that Adam 22 is some sort of pedo, hence why people call him Adam 16. So Yuri suspect is saying, hey, if Adam's a pedo, why would you let a pedo sign your paychecks? Good point. But then the same question could be love levied back at suspect. If you also have suspicion that Adam 22 might have a proclivity for girls under the age of 21, wouldn't you also be a little bit perturbed that he signs your paychecks? Or is it okay? Because your name is Almighty Suspect. Hmm. Or do you not believe the rumours? That's the problem. Who, do you actually believe? I don't know if I believe that Adam is Adam 16 for real. Maybe in the past, he might have been one of those type of dudes. Because he does look like the type of guy that would go outside of a high school and pick up some girls when he was at 22. I could see that happening. But does that make you a pedo, though? Maybe it makes you a creep. I don't really think it makes you a pedo. I think pedo shit should be like when you're like over 25. If you're over 25 and you're still going to the high school, then you're a pedo. But I knew when I was in school, loads of girls in my school would, wouldn't give any of us guys in the same year as them any action. They'd always have older boyfriends that had cars, that had six packs, right? That could drink beer, that had piercings and tattoos. We had no chance with these girls because they were obviously dating young men. But if you're under 25 and you're doing that, it's obviously sus. But I think if you're over 25, that's when it's pedo shit. So maybe, maybe Adam 22 is sus, but I don't think he's straight up PDF. That's what I'd say. If I, if I feel like a nigga weird... And I'm going to let him sign my paychecks when I leave. I'm not going to say nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because you made your choice. We all know the fuck we signed up for. Thank so you. niggas look Straight goofy. To anybody that's here to like have something to say, you don't look You don't Shout look out real, to homie. any black man getting money, but y'all need to focus on money. Do you not realize that I'm getting paid while talking shit about you? <laughs> what are you not getting? I can come up here and say, fuck Yuri every day and I'm going to get paid. Yeah, yeah fuck that guy. Paid. I'm worrying about money. This is shit. He's getting a couple paid. hundred for just... Oh, shit, really? Big up pity. Adam has a pedo charge. You can look it up. You can look it up under his real name. He has an actual charge, AZ. I'm going to trust you on that. I'm not going to look up another man's pedo charge and read that shit in 4K. 
I, I, had, I just had a couple of drinks. I might throw up in my mouth reading that shit, but I'm going to take your word for it. I had no idea that was true. So he actually he, do, he actually does have a pedo charge on his on his jacket. Yikes, I guess. Shit. Saying that. You what know are you what talking saying? about? <laughs> you straight up, dog. We're killing you up here, man. we killing you. <laughs> you said y'all need to be focused on money. This is my job. Talking shit is my job. <laughs> That's right. Is it not? How can you lose? What the fuck? Shut your bitch ass up, nigga. <laughs> you pissing me off up here, nigga. Anyways. Anyway, so that was their reply. Are you guys curious to hear what Yuri had to say and reply back to them? I am. So let's go to Yuri's kick stream. Yuri got on kick and clapped back at those guys. Let's hear what Yuri had to say about those guys replying back to him at his assertion that they were all trash hosts. I am pausing donos this whole time. I will Ooh, unpause donos once donos. I get my it's piece off. Real. I W everyone in the stream. I appreciate you guys so much, man. I'm sorry. Whilst I get my piece off, is that a bit of a pause there? I'm going to pause donos until I get my piece off. Uh, I said yesterday I wouldn't talk about this anymore, but at this point, <laughs> Adam is... He's not even attacking me. You know what I mean? Like, oh, by the way, he did say that, didn't he? Where is it? Where does he say that? He said that somewhere here. Where is it? I've got the tab somewhere over here. Where is it? 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 Yeah, there we go. This is Yuri the other day saying that he would never talk about them again, right? Look what he said here. The other, look how cocky and arrogant he was here. And look at the difference via the stream earlier today. Look at what he said here the other day. <laughs> People are going to be like, oh, like, it's funny you're saying this because <laughs> I'm on a kick right now with 150 viewers, but I'm done giving No Jumper and their host clout. I'm done. I'm done throwing them crumbs. I'm going to keep their names out of my mouth. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> I'm going to continue worrying about the harmony. I love the little nervous laugh he does when he's a little bit nervous and a bit scared, but he just he, he still wants to act like a bad man. So he says that stuff that he says. And then he, <laughs> like, what is that little laugh about? I'm going to keep their names out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm going to continue. Why is that funny? <laughs> Okay, that's what he said. Let's go back to the video. Like, Adam knows there's nothing to attack me with. Like, he's a weirdo. He said some weirdo shit uh, to Riley. He has many different allegations, so it's, like, not a good look for him. Little Pump said he fucking fucked some 17-year-old girl, apparently, as well. Jesus. It's like, he just he doesn't have a good look on him at all. You Jesus. know what I mean? So he wants to try to change the narrative and flip into something that people don't pay attention to. Him being a weirdo. You know what I mean? Like, that's the one thing I feel like he hates the most. I feel like there's two things he hates the most. What was that? Let's get into this, guys. <clears throat> Fuck, bro. Let, let's let's all you know of course he's one of those freaks that sits on his chair with his feet of course yuri's one of those freaks that sits on his little gamer streamer chair with his fucking feet of course he's one of those fucking freaks for uh for anyone from no jumper that's fucking you know from that lame ass company that's watching this all started when adam wanted to clip me being fired again which is false false information so obviously i'm going to want to address that shit right and i talked about it and Adam wants to hide why I left the second time. He doesn't like to admit it. I don't think Flacco's talked about it. I don't think Josh has spoke about it. I don't think Adam's talked about it. Because it's not a good look with all the fucking crazy allegations and crazy stories. So what is he suggesting then? Why did he? Why can't he just say why he got actually fired or why he left? What's he trying to insinuate here? I don't get this. About Adam public stories you guys don't even know the private shit bro you guys don't even know the private fucking shit you hear in the office about this fool you know how many stories i've heard about adam bro weird ass weirdo ass stories in the office okay like what the let's, let's bring up one for example the old no jumper hawaii trip where i just overheard you know this allegations this is just stuff i heard in the office overheard how he had cheated on lena with some super young girl you know it's like 
<laughs> it's getting messy. Now Adam's relationship's getting all blown up. Wow. If Adam, imagine if Lena leaves Adam for house phone. That would be fucking sick. People don't hear the half of this shit. It's like, bro, if you want to get messy, bro, I'll get messy, dude. Hold on, man. <clears throat> it's crazy, weed. dude. What's he gonna do? Smoke weed? I'm gonna get messy. I'm gonna get messy. And it's like, I don't care what you say about me. I don't give a fuck, bro. Like, people say shit about me all. Like, I've been, I'm used to shit talk. <laughs> I'm used to shit talk, bro. I don't give a fuck. People can say whatever they want about me. It's just like, you now you want to, like, attack me where it hurts. You want to you wanna make my girlfriend sad. You wanna where it hurts. Uh, you, you're making it obvious where it does hurt. You're, you, now you want to attack me where it hurts. <laughs> How are you going to let people know where it hurts you? Come on, brother. That's the first mistake. Never let them see you hurt. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Try to attack my girlfriend, make her sad. Guys, it's so stupid I have to even say this. Say if it. if someone like Suspect or Sharp is saying this, they're fucking retarded. Adam Ooh. and uh, Riley have never done shit together. They're How do you know that for sure, though? That's the thing, Yuri. If Yuri... That's the problem with Yuri. We don't believe him because we saw how Yuri reacted when he found a video of his girlfriend on youtube from 10 years ago where she's recording some you know whatever content with her high school friends he got perturbed he got annoyed he got visibly angry annoyed seeing his girlfriend on stream with other people that weren't him before they were together 10 years ago he then decided to call her out on it called her on the phone live on stream and berated her over it then when she got back home after work he went in her he went in on her again and tried to publicly you know embarrass her mock her belittle her for the fact that she didn't remember to tell him about a video she recorded 10 years ago on youtube that she completely forgot about that wasn't even that big of a deal that wasn't a big deal at all so we know how he acts with that sort of stuff. so he can't sit here and act like he's not bothered about these rumors that people put out here that adam 22 might have fucked riley there's no way he can not not convince us that that will get to him because we see what gets to him nonsense stuff they're fucking retarded bro for almighty suspect bro almighty suspect was hitting me up months ago saying yo biggest bro i'm trying to build a computer setup i'm trying to i'm trying to start streaming and all that stuff i'm like all right got you fam what's wrong with that so somebody can't ask you for help and send them a list of shit oh bro too expensive i need the cheapest of the cheap i i i want the cheapest uh, computer set up with the cheapest camera and the cheapest mic and the cheapest wire. What's wrong with that? He's, he's getting into streaming for the first time. He doesn't want a Sennheiser SMB microphone. He doesn't need a fucking SLR camera. He doesn't need the best spec computer. What what's wrong with suggesting give me the free shit? What? So now Yuri is Porsche, what, Porsche shaming people? Despite his whole entire career being funded by people's charity and shit? Is that what he's trying to do? Bro, this fool's trying to spend like 30 bucks on a computer set up to stream, bro. He couldn't even fucking uh, shell out $500 or $1,000 to get a computer set up. Was complaining to me about the prices of... Yo, big up uh, KP. Yeah, for sure. I, I follow a few of those streamers on here. Um, I don't watch Kick as much as I, you do, should do. I watch it mainly on my phone. I don't usually watch it on my computer. I have it usually in the background because you can play... Uh, kick streams on the back uh, in the background with the little mini player thing so i do follow a few of them on there um who would actually follow i would actually tell you on my kick who i follow on there because it, there's there's some there's some decent streamers and i'm not gonna lie let's see who's online now at the moment who am i following i'm currently following aiden i'm currently following vitali someone called nadia a girl called nadia's on stream and another and, and obviously spliff mode you know spliff mode started is part of the fucking no jumper channel so yeah I, I like kick kick is quite good the app as well kind of works well as well the app is quite cool on the iphone what's the point pro big up kp computer shit bro it's crazy that's number one i can't even imagine how much fucking adam is paying him for him to bitch about that sharp sharp's claim to fame sharp has an award for being a sex trafficker good job sharp i'm sure your parents and your mother is proud bro you it's a pimp award by the way and you can't talk about mums and dads being proud when you have videos of you, copious amounts, minutes, hours of footage of you fighting your girlfriend online in various situations where most of the time, 90% of the time, you look like the worst person in it. 
You can't really talk about, you know, making your mum proud or not proud. Come on, Yuri. That's where you got to leave that one out. You're you're a, an acclaimed sex trafficker. Good job. Did you work for Diddy? I don't know, man. Oh, yeah. Big up, KP. I appreciate that, brother. Yeah, th that's the best compliment you can ever pay me, bro. Because I sometimes have streams on in the background, too. So if you're listening to me on the background while you're pumping the weights, while you're pumping the iron, I appreciate that greatly because I know how strict and picky I am about what I'm listening to in the gym. So big up, KP. I appreciate you. That's, that's some cool shit right there, though, Sharp. What are your other accomplishments? Uh, getting millions of views for uh, fucking yelling at women? You know what I mean? The, oh, guys, do you remember that one uh, Sharp interview that got posted accidentally and then it got deleted instantly because they made some girl cry? Sharp made some girl cry in like 10, 15 minutes and she left in tears. She left in tears out of the No Jumper office. They deleted that shit real quick, right? Bro, I think Josh doesn't want to talk about it. Guys. Stuff. Have you ever heard, you know, I'm sure a lot of us have had a job in here, right? Hey guys, have you ever worked a job where your employer tells you, oh, also this happened right around COVID time, right around the PPP loan time, right? Have you guys ever had your employer tell you, hey, um, listen, buddy, we're going to pay you double for the next three pay periods, and then we're going to pay you nothing for the following three pay periods, right? And I was like... Damn, that's kind of strange. And, you know, Josh is just telling me, like, oh, yeah, like, we're just going to pay you double for the next three, and then we're going to pay you nothing for the next three after that. And I was, like, scratching my head. I'm like, why? He's like, ah, don't worry about it, bro. He's like, just some fucking tax stuff. Like, you know, just divvy up the money how you normally do, and it'll be fine. I'm like, all right, cool. I just did that. Someone, you know, I'm not going to put people's names in this drama that don't want to be a part of it, but someone in the office told me, like, hey, Yuri, you ever thought about why Josh did that? You ever thought about why No Jumper, like, paid you double for three uh, for three pay periods and paid you nothing for the next three? It's because that money was meant for you and Trevor and the other employees at the time. They siphoned that money for the company. Even though it's a well-known fact, all YouTube channels, all content all content shit was bussing during COVID. Everyone always talks about how they made the most money they've ever made as a content creator during COVID. And then during that time, they want to fucking take the money that was meant for the employees to so he can fucking get a bigger mansion or some shit like that? Bro, what? Dude, hold on. Wow, Yuri is laying it thick, bro. Yuri is fucking going hard. He's had enough. He's had enough of people calling him a shitty boyfriend. So now he's airing the whole thing out. He's like, you know what? You call me a shitty boyfriend. You call me an abuser, a manipulator, a gaslighter, and harasser. Well, guess what? You're a crappy business person. You're a fraud. <laughs> you scam. It's like, yeah, I like, I like this. They're all getting in the mud. They're getting in the fucking muck. Let's play. Let's continue. That's crazy. Think they know and then like literally i think it was like a couple months after that the the legendary clip came out we make a million a month we make a million a month you make a million a month because you guys are greedy bro you guys you make a million a month because you pay someone a hundred dollars to sit on some fucking podcast that's gonna get 500k views and then they're going to make clips out of it, make money off the clip. Bro, here's the other thing. When they're talking about how all the podcasts are non-profitable, dude, like, Adam always talks about how he's like, oh, do you think your audience is an idiot? Adam literally thinks his audience is full of retards, bro. He says, oh, uh, are, the, pod the podcasts are non-profitable. He's talking about the ad revenue from one podcast from the podcast. What about the clips? What about us shouting out, hey, purchase this lame-ass merch with the shitty designs. Hey, look at these lame-ass merch with the shitty designs of No Jumper. Per How many times did we did that? How many shirt sales did we add? How many clips did they fucking make? How many other views did they get off of us? Facebook, fucking uh, Snapchat, Instagram. Bro, it doesn't end. We're non profitable suck my dick. Okay, non profitable. Let me get back to Sharp as well, too. Good Guys, friends. during the Vegas trip, I never even talked about this, but since Sharp wants to be so rude, during the Vegas trip, once the cameras turned off, Sharp stayed there for hours talking our ears off. And you know what? Why he, you know, whose ear he was talking off specifically? Riley? House phone. Sharp was literally down bad, taking. Uh, uh, picking up his phone showing PayPal receipts he's like guys look at how much money I was making when you guys were all part of the crew when AD and T-Rail and House Phone and Blasi and Yuri were all and Parlord were all a part of this look how much money I was making what's wrong with saying that I don't see what Yuri is get beef with, with, with fucking Sharp in this regard Sharp was upset because I remember that Vegas stream 
Sharp was trying to convince them to, you know, m- you know what you call it, change their mind. He was also the only, I think, rational person during that whole beef and that whole thing flopping. He was saying to those guys, look, don't be so hasty and follow AD and all those T-Row guys. They might have ulterior motives of why they want to leave. They might have a justified reason why they want to leave. Don't be so hasty. Um, I don't think he was bad in, you know, being like that. And if he was worried that his money was going down because everyone was leaving, that's a perfectly justifiable reason to be concerned and to be complaining, especially when the cameras are off. I don't see why Yuri's using this as a stick to beat him with. Like, he wanted to make the same money he's making when those guys are on the channel. Yeah, that makes sense. Why wouldn't he be happy? Why Why wouldn't he should be upset if his money's getting down? That's what I mean anyway. Let's continue. And look how much money I'm making now. Bro, we can we can be such a better team. We can make so much more money. That- what's, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with saying that? How can you mock somebody for wanting you to stay together, for wanting the crew to stay together so they can, they can all eat? What's wrong with saying that? That was him basically begging house phone and everyone to return so he can get his bread back up. What's wrong with that? Because no jumper is falling the fuck off and they're making... Okay, they were falling the fuck off. That's the, that's the thing. To be fair to Sharp, he was freaking out back then like everyone was freaking out because the, that channel was going really well. It was quote-unquote bussing when AD, T-Rail, Blasi, um, house phone, Duno... The, all that crew were there even fucking what's his name even cocaine bot when all those guys were there it was going well so when they all left it was a shame because they were better together i personally still think that even though their own content is pretty decent i think they're still better together so somebody that was involved in that who benefited from that who saw how profitable that period in time was and how fun it was it's perfectly normal for them to be like hey man can you guys not just like think it through one more time can you guys not be so hasty about leaving can you guys maybe stay? What's wrong with saying that? I don't get why he's like mocking Sharp for being upset for losing out on money. It's like, what? No money. It's crazy, bro. Anyway, begging house phone. He was begging house phone. Please return so we can get our bread back up. By the way, just think about this. This all started because Yuri decided to berate his girlfriend on stream. Because she made a video with a random dude 10 years ago on YouTube. This is why this whole thing has started. Because he had an argument with his girlfriend. Like he does every other week. And somehow this particular one went viral. <laughs> so basically he put this on himself. Just to bring back on Fig into this. Back on Fig has 150,000 subscribers. And gets more engagement and more live viewers than you guys do. But that's what I don't know what that anyway, whatever. And you have this whole numbers game thing that they all do is very, very gay, by the way. Four million subs, bro. How many of those subs are like people that have like forgot and they're just like, I don't even know I'm subbed to this fucking weirdo no more. Like they don't even remember, it, dude. It's like there's so many other channels they get. I sitting in this fucking room, I've gotten more viewers than Almighty, Sharp, and whatever other lame ass host they can gather for that new stream. I've gotten more fucking live viewers sitting in this room by my fucking self doing that shit that's than getting all them collected together trying to fucking be drama filled and talk about shit that's not true and spread false narratives it's crazy uh, that's not true though isn't it we've seen your numbers though isn't it? that's not true again i'm not going to do the whole numbers thing but let's not lie they still probably get even though jumper's not as what it used to be they still probably get more numbers than him they're mad bro let's just mute that for now because it's too much copyright music we should compare Lord and i could fucking Swamp their bro. If Paul Gordon and I were to stream three t- together, three times a fucking uh, a week, every week for five months, bro, you got it's it's over with for you guys. Please it's like it. the only Please thing you guys it. fucking rely on Please is just it. like false narratives, Please and I guess it. like you know people not uh, pushing out as much shit content as you guys do. You know what I mean? Please do. I bet I bet they do, bro. I bet they try. It's harder than it seems. I beg they try to do a consistent stream for three times a week for five months. I beg they try to do it. I bet you it won't do it. I bet you it wouldn't last. I bet you it won't last. I bet you it wouldn't last. You still crashing out, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Anyway, bro. You know what? 
I'm going good. to end it there. That's the Yuri crash out. You got it. He went back and forth. He's really angry and upset about those guys. But personally, I feel like he brought it upon himself. He didn't need to call all those hosts trash. He didn't need to shit on the platform. He didn't need to insult them. It was very unnecessary. Obviously, he's feeling a little bit insecure, a little bit, you know, um, embarrassed a little bit insulted because everyone's ragging on him and his girlfriend because of that viral clip but it is it is what it is they have a toxic relationship um people online saw it in full hd and it kind of rolled out the way it rolled out there's no need to get upset no need to get annoyed no need to go fucking crazy because you know all you have to do is just treat your girlfriend right and all those things wouldn't happen but he doesn't and of course people have something to say about it because look at what the stuff they look at what they do on this is the thing about them that's dumb if they stop doing this on stream no one would care but look at the look at the kind of stuff that they put out on their own streams look at this clip look at this clip Curtis you have to no jumper ready look at this fucking clip look how stupid this clip is look at this look at this look at this look at this hear this can you hear this in the background i'm going to read out the subtitles to you you called me a nasty ass bitch everyone can hear you throwing stuff okay so there is a theory going around that the issue the reason why they've got so many issues is that allegedly riley cheated on yuri at the beginning of their relationship and yuri just has never gotten over it and again i've never i've been quite lucky i've never been cheated on and stuff it probably could happen in the future it maybe has happened and i don't know but to my knowledge i've never have been cheated but i do know from other guys that i've spoken to when it does happen it's quite hard to handle especially for dudes i don't know why it is but guys find it very difficult to handle when they find out their girlfriend or their partner has cheated on them so maybe the only way to handle this as a guy is just to break up with somebody because i don't think you can i don't think we have the capability to get out of our heads Maybe every time we kind of look over at the girl, we kind of just keep picturing her getting fucking donkey fucked by somebody else. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We picture her moaning and groaning by another man's hand and we could just never get it. So maybe this is this could explain why Yuri is so aggressive, why he's so mean and nasty to her on stream. And like he kind of pokes her and he's very petty because he's taking out all that frustration of the alleged, you know, adultery that happened back in the day. That's the theory. I'm not sure if that's true, but that's the theory that exists on the internet. No, you said you said you wanted to leave tomorrow. It's a simple request. It's a simple. It's a simple request. Can you stop throwing stuff? I will literally. Leave me the fuck alone. I don't want to talk to you. I will get a hotel. If you keep throwing stuff, you're making yourself look hella crazy on the stream right now. No, no, I'm not. You wanted to drink and drive, and I wanted an Uber, and, now, and, and you're defending drinking and driving still. Yeah, you are. Oh, yeah, I remember this stream. When Yuri called her out in public about wanting to drink and drive, I remember this stream. It was so fucking dumb. <laughs> You want to drink and drive? Like, he was really trying to, like, really drumming it home on stream that, you know, he was a good guy and, and he made himself look like an obnoxious twat. Oh, big up Anon Mario. She slept with somebody at New at No Jumper before Yuri. They used to make fun of him at the office all the time. That's the... Is that it? Come on, Anon Mario. Come on, Anon. So she fucked somebody at No Jumper before they got she got together with Yuri. And he's annoyed about that. So she, she didn't even technically cheat on him. Come on. If that's the reason, he's more of a bitch than I ever fucking thought. He's annoyed that she fucked somebody else before him. What did he think she was? Like a virgin before they met or something? What a bizarre human, bro. Yeah, you are. <clears throat> Wanting to drink it. <laughs> anyway, you get the gist. You get the fucking gist. You get. Oops, sorry. 
you get the fucking gist. Um, Riley and Yuri won't go, you know, they'll be together for a long time. It's not going to end anytime soon. And then to finally end it here, we have um, this clip here or this screenshot taken from Riley's Instagram where she tweet where she posted the following on Instagram stories. Riley on Instagram stories said the following corniest podcast in the world. That's got a good, that's got a good ring to it, to be fair corniest podcast in the world i like that it's got a good ring to it so it's Riley g said on instagram after all the back and forth after everything you know suspect said after everything sharp said blah 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 she said the following y'all crazy got me fucked up i've been nothing but kind loyal and respectful these old ass men literally getting off on bashing a girl who has no clout and a, d a damn half their age she's really fucking sad if you ask me don't y'all have important rappers to interview? Oh, wait. So, you're, Riley is basically proving that she's a bit of a bird. Because if I'm not mistaken, isn't Suspect younger than Yuri? Or aren't they kind of the same age? So, it's like, your boyfriend's, like, you know, like... And again, she's defending Yuri's actions. She's talking out about this. Despite getting embarrassed online by the by a boyfriend over that fucking dumb youtube video so you have nothing to say about the youtube video embarrassment but you have everything to say about this again you know you know they're perfect for each other they are fucking perfect for each other let's move on i'm fucking finished with that shit i don't fucking care let's do some bapa verse shit let's do some fucking bapa verse shit let's do some fucking bapa verse shit do some fucking papa verse shit papa papa verse shit so first post we want to talk about is this one courtesy of the t fact sub k reddit it says papa talking to tulsi about his hot button issues so let's see brendan Schaub attempt to talk politics with the one and the only tulsi gabbard more like tulsi hottie <laughs> get it anyway cool Let's play this fucking video. Let's see Brendan trying to talk. And all these, all these people that we can't, we don't have documentation. You just lend them in. You know, a lot of them are Chinese. There's <laughs> and people when they think of border, they think Mexicans. Mexicans aren't coming here. The majority of them are not Mexican. Yeah. And the American, they think Chinese. Even the way he says Chinese is almost kind of racist, isn't it? The way Brendan says Chinese is kind of racist. I don't know what some the way he says Chinese. It's something racist about the way he says Chinese. One more time. All these people that we can't, we don't document. These, all these people. Who? What people? <laughs> all these people. What type of people? What do you mean by that? Uh, as Drewski would say. What do you mean by that? Tation. <laughs> you just lend them in. Let them you know, in. A lot of them are Chinese. There's Chinese. <laughs> One more time. Chinese. There's the, a lot of them are Chinese. There's, you know, a lot of them are Chinese. There's the, in, you know, a lot of them are Chinese. There's the, and people th when they think of border, they think Mexicans. Mexicans aren't coming. Oh, when they, when people think of borders, they think like Mexi borders, right? Like Mexi kids, right? Mexi kids, Mexi borders. It's not actually Mexicans. I'm in here. The majority of them are so Mexicans aren't immigrating to the United States illegally or legally. Is that what you're trying to say? Cool. Not Mexican. Yeah. But Where are Mexicans going then instead? Are they going to Sri Lanka? Are they going to Zanzibar? Where, should, where are Mexicans going? Ibiza, right? Where are they actually going? Where are these Mexicans going? Are they going to Dubai? <laughs> Mexicans aren't... <laughs> they're, not, they're not trying to get to the States anymore to make a better life for themselves and their family. Nah, man. They're not doing that anymore. They're coming over here to the UK. Yeah, you know I mean? They're trying to go... They're trying to move into... They're trying to move to the Isle of Wight. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to move to Hastings and the american public doesn't realize that you're allowing all oh so the american public does realize that but you do realize that cool brendan realizes stuff that mega public doesn't realize thank you for letting us know all sorts of people and yep. terrorists everybody yeah and if you're right if you're the biden cabinet and your idea is just to get that mail-in ballot well hold on so he's he thinks that they're letting all the all the immigrants through because they're banking on mail-in ballots is that how it works? Can you just, can you vote in an election in the United States if you're an immigrant and you don't have any legal documentation? Is that, is that possible? Can you, can you take part in a vote? Can you actually vote if you, if you're an illegal immigrant? Is that possible? Doesn't sound like it makes sense. <laughs> Why would you be able to vote? <laughs> 
the what? <laughs> it doesn't sound like it's real, but hey, I don't know what I'm talking about. At what cost? Well, they're not allowed you're, to vote. You're allowing Actually, some they're... terrorist in there. Well, yeah. it... So Mexican terrorists, not Mexican terrorists, are migrating into the States in order to vote and to be terrorists. Legal no. aliens are not allowed to vote, technically. Also, describing immigrants as illegal aliens is the most American dehumanizing thing ever. It's bad enough that you call them illegals, but then reducing them to illegal aliens. Extraterrestrial. Imagine calling another human... Imagine reducing a human... Isn't that similar to what the Nazis did with Jews back in the day? Where they used to call them fucking roaches, right? Back in the old... Uh, Back in the old, back in the old Hitler days, didn't they used to dehumanize um, Jewish people by calling them roaches? It wasn't that what they did by saying that they were, they were insects and they had to be exterminated. Dehuman, isn't that the first part of like reducing somebody? <laughs> well, it's illegal aliens. Why do you guys do that in America? Why do you guys call illegal immig or like you know immigrants that haven't come over legally illegal aliens? Is that because the aliens is like an acronym? Is that what it means? Is, is aliens an acronym for something else? Right, but but what it is is right now. Anyway, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed Brendan talking at Tulsi Gabbard, and not actually and not actually asking her a question. Somebody who is, from what I remember, is on the fucking the rumor mill is that she may be a fucking VP cabin, cabin a VP candidate for Trump. Um, you know, if he ends up fucking running for election, or he's obviously running for election, but if he ends up fucking, you know, becoming president, she's a VP candidate, and she's sitting right across from him. All this incredible knowledge, right, experience. Maybe she's fallen off a bit, cool, but she's still, you know, she's still got some insights that you would probably want to hear. And Brennan's over here talking at her about Chinese. One more time. One more time. All these people that we can't, we don't have documentation, we just lend them in. Let you know, a lot of them are Chinese. There's Chinese. And people, when they think of border, they think Mexicans. Mexicans aren't coming here. The majority of them are not Mexican. The and the American public doesn't realize that. You're allowing all sorts of people and yep. terrorists, everybody. Yep. And if you're, a, if you're the Biden cabinet and your idea is just to get that mail-in ballot, well, at what cost? Well, they're not allowed you're, to you're, vote. You're actually, allowing some so, terrorist in there. Well, yeah, illegal you know. aliens are not allowed to vote, technically, right? But but what? I like how she kind of zoned out there and checked her phone. Did you guys see that? You see Tulsi kind of zone out there. Look her face. She's got the zone out face. Look, you know when someone's just talking at you and not letting you speak? Look her face. She's got the zone out face. She's got the face someone knows that. He's not, he's not let. Right, it's Tulsi Gabbard bigger than Brian Callen. Tossie Gabbard could actually pick up Brian Callen, couldn't she? Fuck, bro. She's all woman, isn't it? Look how small Brian is compared to Tossie Gabbard. Look, look at her. <laughs> he looks like a little child next to her. He's big red chair. But anyway, um, look, at, she gets so bored, she checks her phone. Look, Brendan's just talking at her. Watch her check her phone. Yep. And if you're, a, if you're the Biden cabinet and your idea is just to get that mail-in ballot... She's well, so bored. At what cost? Well, they're not allowed you're, to you're, vote. You're allowing <laughs> some. <laughs> She's so bored. Brendan has a really good skill at being able to bore somebody senseless when when they're in an interview. He does have a really good skill at that. She's so fucking bored. <laughs> Bless her. She's so bored. <sighs> that was fucking brilliant. Big up fucking Brendan. You gotta fucking love that guy. Honestly. He fucking found a way to fucking talk at Tulsi Gubbard about fucking politics the same way he's fucking, you know, tried to educate, what you call it, Sammy the Ball about fucking gangs and shit and the mob. That was one of my best, that's one of the best, that's one of my, that's one of my favorite clips, I'm not going to lie, ever that I've ever watched. Um, let's, uh, let's watch this other clip too. There's another one too. This one's called Papa asked, Papa asks Tulsi Gabbard why nobody's attempted to assassinate Donald Trump. What? Let's actually. I haven't watched this yet, but let's watch this. Big up, uh, Hey Mark Wigsky from the T5K subreddit for this clip. Let's let's play this. What? Gotten away from. Exactly. Well, it's wild to me. This might be a hot take, and we have to edit this. Let me know. But like back in the day, when a president, like if Trump was in the '60s, like like uh, JFK was, 
they figure out a way to get rid of them, right? JFK, see you, dude. We're out of here. You go against Cuba and the missile crap, you're out of here. Bay of Pigs, you're out of here. I can't believe with Trump, they, they as much as they, there's never been a more hated candidate, there's never been a more hated president from the Democrats than Trump. How there hasn't been some sort of hey, that hey, we know hey, of, bro. Be, Easy. You know what I'm saying? But what was JFK then? There's never been a more hated president than Trump. But then you're saying JFK got assassinated because of what? Huh? No. No, it's it's. I'm gonna say. What kind of? I'm confused about even the question. Why hasn't somebody tried to assassinate Donald Trump? For what, though? Huh? I'm confused. Do, do you guys figure out what you're trying to say? What are you trying to say here? Do you guys know? Like, <sighs> almost. I, the word I that rhymes with here, passionation. No, I know, but here's what gotten he, away from. Exactly. What's wild to me? This might be a hot take. You have to edit this. Let me know. What did he say? Passionation. Was that bad the end? Say no. No, it's it's. I'm gonna say, say I, the word, I but it rhymes with here, passionation. No, I... I'm not gonna say the word, but it rhymes with passionation. That's not a word, bro. Passionation isn't a word. <laughs> I'm not going to say the word. Yeah, because it's not a fucking word. You know, no, it's... it's. I'm going to say, say the I, word I that rhymes with hear, passionation. No, I know. Passionation. Yeah, could you maybe let her answer the question as well, by the way? We, we know what you meant. We get it. We're not fucking as dumb as you. We know what you were kind of insinuating. We know what you were heavily hinting towards. Maybe let her answer the question without interrupting her. Maybe. Hey, no. no, it's, it's. I'm going to say, say I, the I, word. I, it rhymes with hear, passionation. No, I know. Oh, honestly, bro. How does Brendan have two degrees? How does Brennan have two degrees? Also, didn't he say that he thinks Donald Trump is the most hated president of all time? Cool. But then he's saying that JFK got assassinated because of the Cuba missile crisis and shit. So is he kind of trying to insinuate that JFK was a Republican? That was also Haiti. That's why he got assassinated. But wasn't JFK Democrat? I'm not mistaken. Wasn't JFK a Democrat? So technically, Republicans, by his logic, by Brennan's logic, Republicans killed JFK. So he's asking, why don't Democrats kill Trump? <laughs> what? <laughs> he's wondering why AOC doesn't just... Pull up, pull up, pull up with a stick. Like, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> what? <laughs> I love how he's also assuming that JFK was assassinated <laughs> for the shit that was happening in Cuba. Just that one reason, right? I think Quayle said it, right? JFK fit fumbling Cuba. He just had to take him out. He's not doing a good enough job. They gave him enough warnings. Oh my God, bro. This guy has two degrees. This guy's a millionaire. He has like five cars. He lives in a mansion in LA and he's legitimately maybe a single digit IQ person. And the funny thing about Brendan though, which I kind of has always kind of been impressed by is that his intellect isn't like, you know, sometimes, how, how do you say this? You know, when you're smart, again, you know, when you're kind of smart about, no, you know, when you're knowledgeable about your area of expertise, but then you bump into somebody or you start talking to somebody that knows a bit more, a bit more about you, sorry, that knows a bit more than you do, usually a normal, well-adjusted person 
will be like, oh shit, kind of impressed. Like shit, that person knows a bit more than I do. And you kind of like, I wouldn't say you'll look, you'll lower yourself, but you're almost kind of like, you know, you almost take a bit of a back seat and let them kind of lead the combo a bit. And then maybe throw in some questions here and there to learn new things. But you don't try and like flex yourself and be like, no, I know more. When you clearly know the person across from you knows way more than what you do. So I love that Brendan doesn't really have that, not even humility, he doesn't have that fear that like, is it intellectual fear? Whatever that thing I'm trying to think of, he doesn't have that ability. So he's sitting in front of Tulsi Gubbard talking about politics and you'd imagine because it's politics, okay, let me fucking, you know, let me let the woman who fucking ran for president to let, you know what I mean? Let her fucking, I know she's fallen off a bit and she's not what she used to be and she maybe talks a bit of shit here and there, but still, she's way more qualified to talk about politics than I am. Maybe let's give her the floor. <laughs> nah. He just starts throwing out these fucking, these conspiracy theories that he half read on his phone while he's drinking and driving and taking his kids to school. That's the thing that's most impressive about me. That like he really doesn't have ability to be like, like, okay, let me just like chill and let her speak because she knows more. He even he even starts talking more loudly. He talks starts talking more like passionately. Starts to like, you know, really go for it. It's like, bruh, let her speak, bro. She kind of probably knows more than you do. Like, you know, give her this. <sighs> yeah. Impressive. In fucking impressive. Big up, big up Brendan, man. Um, yeah. It, no, let's say that one more time. It rhymes with passion. What was that passionate? Easy. You know what I'm saying though? No, it's it's. You know what I'm saying though? No, let me. That was good. That was good. Though. You know what I'm saying though? No, it's easy. You know what I'm saying though? No, no. it's it's. <laughs> I'm gonna say, say the word that rhymes with here, passionation. No, I know, but here rhymes with here, here's, passionation. No, I it wouldn't. Rhymes with here, here's, passionation. No, I know. Passionation. Oh my god, man! I would love to be that dumb and be that paid. I think that's the, I think that's what I'm missing in life. I think I put too much pride, or no, I think I put too much value in my intellect, or I put too much value in trying to learn things. I play too much. I put too much value in trying to be a student. I put too much value in, uh, you know, asking questions because I think actually being dumb being redacted is actually the best way to go about life because when you're dumb i don't think you have an a concept or an idea that you're dumb you probably think you're way smarter than what you actually are but when you think you're tr but when you're trying to learn things or when you think you've got some level of intellect it can maybe sometimes give you not even delusions of grandeur but it can sometimes It can be for the negative. Honestly, I, I think there's I think there's a utility in being redacted like Brendan. I think so. And I'm being 100% honest. I think there's a utility. I think there's a benefit to being redacted or to being regarded. I think it actually does work in your favor. <laughs> the more regarded you are, the better it is for you. I swear to God, that is, I don't know, you know, I don't have any proof, no evidence, just pure vibes. But I think that's the truth. I honestly do think that's the truth fucking hell what absolute redact anyway um let's fucking continue what other clips here i got to watch here oh before we move on to t fat k actually because i want to watch an episode of t fat k because that was quite good so let's move on here let's get some other clips oh yeah let's do this one look at this clip here meet fear vaughn in the cyber truck at a stoplight look at the look at the difference in careers Look at the differences in careers out here. Look at what this person posted on the T5K subreddit. Pick up the person that posted this, right? Allegedly, they bumped into fucking Fear of One in a cyber truck, right? Living fucking life. Let's play this video. Your name. One, one second. Let's put this. Let's put this. Let's put this. Let's wait full screen. There you go. Let's see Fear of One in a cyber truck. Think of the think of the contrast. Brendan's out here trying to give away a Ford Lightning that keeps going back in in and out of the garage. Obviously, a lemon. He's driving a Ram truck. There's no more Lamborghini Urus. The wife is no more taking pictures of those fucking Lamborghini steering wheel. She's not doing that fucking corny headrest fucking picture anymore. There's no Ferrari. There's no Porsche. And here's Fio with his star ascending in the Cybertruck. And of course, Brendan can't buy a Cybertruck because he's always talking about Tesla's being soy boy cars. So this is the funny contrast. They're two careers. You're never going to believe the encounter this guy just had with Theo Vaughn at a stop. 
Right. What's going on, buddy? Just got off of work, man. And I'll be watching your, I'll be listening to your podcast every day, dog. And you the real one, man. The Daily Hum. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That's pretty cool. Imagine rocking up to a red to a traffic stop and you see fucking Theo in the fucking, you know, in the cyber truck. No one's doing that for fucking Brendan when he pulls up to the lights in his fucking Ram truck. No one's putting him doing that when he's at the lights upside down after flipping his fucking truck, right? No one's doing that when he's on his e bike, right, on, in the fucking hill somewhere. No one's fucking doing that. But they're probably gonna do that for fucking you know Theo and the fucking lights. It's fucking crazy to think of it though. Absolutely crazy to see where Theo's career has gone and where Brendan's career has gone. Considering that they, you know, considering in a weird way, Brendan kind of put Theo on. Not really, but kind of. Those early episodes of T-Fat K where Theo was on all the time, where you got Guest of the Year. Remember when Kristen, remember that competition they did where Chris Alia and Theo would always kind of duke it out every year on T-Fat K to see who was the best Guest of the Year. And then afterwards, King of the Sting, like, Brendan kind of did a lot for for Theo's career early on. Let's not lie. Brendan kind of did a lot for his career. And then as soon as things went shitty and went left, you, you know, <laughs> Theo abandoned ship and hasn't been back ever since. He quit live on air. I don't want that, right? And hasn't been since since. The next time we saw him, he was behind a DJ booth with Diplo. You know, he's hanging out with UFC fighters, front row seats having some of the best guests ever on his podcast. It's been crazy to see. One person's going up and one person's going completely down. Fucking wild. Absolutely wild. Let's watch it one more time. You're never going to believe the encounter this guy just had with Theo Vaughn at a stoplight. What's going on, buddy? Just got off of work, man. And I'll be watching your, I'll be listening to your podcast every day, dog. Hey, you the real one, man. The Daily Hunt. Come on, Jack Donaghy. Jack Donaghy Jr., come on. Be for real. You don't think those early episodes of T-Fat K and King of the Sting did anything for Fear of One? He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't even have a podcast then. Those shows probably give him the idea to do his own podcast. We would have never got the fucking, what you call it, Fear Pod, what was it called? Um, Whatever the name of these pods called. We wouldn't have got it if he didn't do the fucking but Brendan Shaw, or sorry, T Fat K and shit. I'm not saying Brendan's responsible for his success, but let's be also be honest with the trajectory, with the timeline of events. Fear wasn't doing pods or many pods before he met Brendan. Then he meets Brendan, starts doing more of them, starts doing King and the Sting with him, does his own show, and obviously his, his career, and obviously he's super talented and super funny anyway. So he's always he was always probably going to make it. But Brendan did help in the beginning for sure. He did give some assistance. Brennan didn't inspire anyone to do a podcast. 2014 comedy podcasts were nearly... Ob um, but that's the thing, Jack, Don Jack Donaghy. Theo didn't have one before he met Brendan. That's what I'm telling you. Again, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But if my timeline is correct, Theo didn't start his podcast until he was with Brendan. I'm not sure if... I'm not sure if, um, you know, what you call it... Um, correlation does is not no causation isn't correlation or whatever that fucking term is i understand but you know let's also call a spade a spade either way either way my point remains it's just wild to see one person stars ascending one person stars descending right Ascend, you know fucking crazy fucking absolutely crazy okay absolutely crazy well let me give you a reminder, a little bit of a look back into the history books. Look at where Brendan used to be. Look at where Brendan used to be. Look at where Brendan's career was back in the day. Look at the shows. Look at the shows he used to do. Look at the shows he used to do. Look at Brendan here. Uh, Dan B texted, what's more difficult, Bravo analysis? or MMA analysis and why <laughs> Bra look at the makeup look at the makeup he's got on he's on here he's on these shows on Bravo he's sitting next to fucking real housewives people Brendan was living good bro and he pissed it literally pissed it all into a sink 
That's why I said to you guys, I think that party he had was his girlfriend, sorry, his wife's way of cheering him up. I've got a theory that Brendan is really depressed. That's my theory. Like, he's really not taking it well, how his career's panned out, everyone leaving LA, the beef and how it fell out, you know, the fallout of the whole Bobby Lee thing, the fallout of the Kalila thing, the fallout of the Annie thing. He's quite lonely. And he's obviously his career's gone kaputz. So he had to quit fucking stand up. He sold a bunch of cars. He's downsized his house. Life isn't the same as it was. Back then, he was probably swimming in money, swimming in opportunities. So much so, he was on these Bravo shows doing these gossipy, you know, celebrity type things, which are usually reserved for people who have a bit of a name. They have a bit of motion, a bit of clout. Now, Brendan couldn't even... Nowadays, I don't think Brendan could even pay to get on this show. Bravo, it goes deep. There's a lot of layers. There's a lot of layers. There's a lot of layers. Brendan... Oh, really? Is that true? Ava of Andy, that Ozempic he's on is known to cause depression. Is that true? Is that a side effect? I didn't know that. Ozempic depression. I had no idea. I was... Wow. Really? There we go. Let's see. Ozempic cause depression. Let's see. According to the, the Mama Mia, big up Aves of Andy. According to NPR Pharmaceuticals correspondent Sydney Lupkin, FDA adverse event reporting system has received at least four hundred and eighty-eight nine results of sorry reports of patients experiencing anxiety, depression, or suicidal thoughts while taking drugs like Ozempic that contain an active ingredient called sem. What, how do you say that? Semaglut, semaglut, semagluted, semagluted, semagluted. Jesus Christ. Semaglutid. Does Ozempic have mental health side effects? I had no idea that was a thing. That is wild, bro. She. Uh, where is it? Where is it? There you go. Teresa K wants to know if you could set up a housewife with your best friend who. Oh, sorry. Semaglutide. Big up, Koila. Thank you for the. Um, what do you call it? Um, thank you for fucking phonetically spelling it out for me. Semaglutide, semaglutide, semaglut. Is that say say? Let's go back to it again. Semaglutide, semaglutide, semaglutide. Big up, Koyla. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate ya. Who would you choose and why? Oh, hold on. I would say. What's the question? Choose and why? What's the question? There's a lot of layers. There's a lot of layers. layers. There's a lot of. Layers. Brendan, Teresa K wants to know if you could set up a housewife with your best friend, who would you choose and why? Oh. How much... Look at him acting like it was a really good question. It's not that good of a question. Uh, how much do we want to bet he mentions Joe Rogan? Will he mention Joe Rogan or will he resist the urge to mention Joe Rogan? Oh. I would set up my friend Brian Callen with Kelly. Oh. From Kelly Dodd. Yes. Really? <laughs> wow. They would be explosive. Well, I think ah! we should make this happen. Is he a fighter also? Uh, <laughs> Is he a fighter? Uh, no, he's not. He's an actor, comedian. Wow, he's been I in think, everything, yes. I think we should make this happen. Brian hasn't been in everything. He's been in nothing. He's been in fucking, what's that thing called? 40-year-old virgin or something. What was he in? No, what was that, what was that, what was that movie that Brendan, Brian Callan was in? That one where they get drunk and shit in Las Vegas. What was it called? With uh, Bradley Cooper. What was that movie called? Not Four Year Old Version. What movie was Brent Brian Callen in that was super famous? Do you guys remember the name of it? Is it Hangover? Is it Bradley Cooper? The movie is in. He's in with that and, and they go to Vegas and they get fucking confused. Is it Hangover? Uh, Brian Callen Hangover. Is it? Is, is that a movie that he was in? That's the most famous movie he's been in, isn't it? Right. Gringo Pappy. <laughs> yeah, The Hangover. Okay, cool. That's the movie that Brian Keller was in, The Hangover. Is he in all of them? Is he in the is he in the sequels or did he just come in the first one? Come. Is he just the first one? Look at Brian. Look at that. When life was good. When life was fucking good. Uh, 
when life was good. Hangover vibes, yeah? Cool. Let's go to Alicia from Atlanta. Hey, yeah, big up 24K. Yes, guy, I'm in the UK. I'm in the UK, my friend. I'm in the UK. Big up Josie. Callum was in the original section of the city. How I met your mother, Oz. He's been in a lot. Oh, really? Okay, fair play, Josie. Let's actually read his fucking IMDb. I didn't know that. To be fair, I, I've never watched Section of the City. I've never also watched Oz, so maybe that's why I don't really know of his credits, you know? I've never watched those shows. I fucking hate Sex and the City, to be fair. Um, I found that show insufferable. Same way with girls and shit. I've hated it. But I respect its legend. I respect its importance in TV history and stuff. But it was never for me, the show itself. Um, let's see Brian Callan's credits. Is he a part of the cast yet? What are we doing? Let's, let's do what's it? Brian Callan IMDb, isn't it? IMDb, yeah? I said Brian. Let's see. Brian. He's not. He's not. He's not famous enough to be like a Brian on there, is he? You got to put his full name. Let's do Brian Callen IMDb. Let's see. Let's see what he's got here. Because I don't really know much of his credits. I swear to God, I'm proper, you know, green when it comes to shit. So he's got here schooled, and he's got a cameo for tra trailer for Joker as many of his main credits here. Let's scroll down and see what he's got here. What's he got? He's known for what? Oh, he was in Warrior. Really? I don't remember him in there. Actually, I think I watched that as well. Recently. He is in Bad Santa, Old School, and The Hangover. Okay, fair play. Josie's right then. He actually has some good credits. What's his up-and-coming role he's got coming up here? He's in something called Topper. What the fuck is Topper? Once um, one of the top rising comedians, Topper, has quickly fallen from grace and finds himself bitter, hat comic struggling to get in the cutthroat comedy L.A., Wow, there's a there's a show called Topper coming out soon. What's that about? Let's see. Topper TV series. Let's see. If there's any news about this. It's about some LA comedian. Let's see. Okay, no details. It seems like it's a shit one then. No one's talking about it. Cool. IMDB, let's go back to his credits. Best of with Brian Callen, twenty twenty two. Think like a dog. School. That was a good show. That was a big show. Goldberg's eight point eight zero. Joker. Laugh Factory. Kingdom. He was in Kingdom. Fuck! I don't. He was in Dirty Lies. T five K three D. He was in Two Broke Girls. No way was he in Two Broke Girls. I have, bro. He's got some decent credits, isn't it? <laughs> Let's be fair. <laughs> I don't know what range 15 is. He's, he was in Expendable 7. What? Who the fuck was in Expendable 7, though? Expendable 7? The, what the fuck is that? What is the Expendable 7? What the fuck is the Expendables? 7? I don't think I even watched 1. I didn't know they have 7 Expendables. It was a cartoon. Is that Brian there? Is that him in the trailer? Is that him there or is that Jean-Claude Van Damme? I don't know. So Brian was in the Expendable Seven. Okay, I don't know what that was, if it was a cartoon or whatever, but he was in it. It's a good look. Alicia, what's your question? Hi everyone, I love you all, but my question is for Brandon. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the woman calling Brandon is Brandon, but my question is for Brandon. Brandon. But my question is for Brandon. Um, it's very important. Mary <laughs> Look how upset he is. <laughs> my question is for Brandon. Look how angry. He is. <laughs> I'm sorry. This has to be a screen grab. Oh, oh, he's so mad. He's so angry. <laughs> my question is for Brandon. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh, he's so mad. He's so angry. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I love you all, but my question is for Brandon. Mm -hmm. um, it's very important. Mary, Shag, Kill, Stephanie, Vicky, or Vanderpump? Okay, you marry one, you shag one, you kill one. Uh 
What is he gonna say? It's actually Brendan. Let's see what he says. Let's see what he says. Uh, Bethany Vanderpump, Vicky, Mary Bethany. Oh, we have to swallow the anger. Bethany, I know, I am. Yeah, I am. Okay, a lot of respect with Bethany. Okay. Um, <laughs> kill Vanderpump. Okay. Wow. I know. Wow. And you're gonna shag Vicky. You're gonna shag Vicky. I love I it. Okay. I know. I know. There you yeah, go. I know. I'm right. in Orange County, man. Okay. Like, yeah. uh, by the way, th 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 where are those Gucci shoes? Do you think he sold them? Where are those Gucci's? Where are the Gucci's? Do you think they're gone? You remember, you remember the Gucci shoes? Where are those Gucci shoes? Do you think they do you think they've been sold? Do you think they're still part of the collection? Man, he was living good, bro. He was wearing Gucci shoes on Bravo, chatting shit about Vanderpump rules and shit, having a grand old time. He was living the life of Riley. And now look how things have transpired. So happens you don't stay in your lane, man. So happens you don't stay in your lane. That's what happens when you don't stay in your blood clot lane. Talking about lanes, look at this clip. Big up the Final Kid subreddit guys for posting this. Look at this clip from the TFK 3D. Do you guys remember that show? TFK 3D? Do you remember that TFK 3D show? Well, these guys have a clip of it. And I think it looks pretty decent. I'm not gonna lie. I think this show actually was pretty decent. At least they were making an effort. At least they were trying to be funny. At least they were being creative. And the, most importantly, look at how much fun they were having. Look at how much fun they were clearly having back then. Loving life. Look at this. And contrasted to how they are now on the podcast. And that's why they call it the little man in the boat. <laughs> I think if you were to push Brian harder, he might have ended up on the other side of the set. Look at how hard he pushed him. And that's why they call it the little man in the boat. <laughs> Get out of here. Brian nearly flew to the other side of the set. <laughs> oh, hey guys. I'm Brendan Shaw from The Fire and the Kid. And I'm Brian Callen from The Fighter and the Kid. You know, we have a podcast called The Fighter and the Kid. And some people say it's the best podcast ever. Some? Try everybody, Brian. <laughs> Things are going so well, Hollywood decided to give us our own web. Look at that. That's probably one of Brian's cars as well. Sorry, Brendan's cars. That's a Porsche, isn't it? In red. I, don't, I forgot he even had this. Is that a Porsche or Ferrari? It looks like a Porsche to me. Look at how much money they had back then. That's probably Brendan's driveway. That's probably his mansion. Imagine what they paid these girls, day rates, to do this fucking scene. They were living good, bro. Exactly. Who said it in the, in the stream chat about the money? was Exactly. Big up, um, God, good, good Rizdans. Sorry, I forgot how you spell your name. Money was definitely flowing like a fucking tap. This is the beginning of the podcast bubble where things were fucking good. Sponsors everywhere. Everybody listening. Everyone thinking you're smart and funny. Good times were rolling series crazy i know in other words we don't want to just feed people's ears let's in other words the podcast has been so successful that we want to create a visual experience not just for your ears now it's for your eyes as well yeah it's called finding the kid 3d <laughs> big up quailer yeah i know that's how you know i'm fucking regarded in it i'm here fucking trying to you know identify the fucking car making model based on the side and the alloys and the fucking you know rear head rear lights and shit right <laughs> while there's like three very voluptuously scantily clad women fucking you know soapily watching up the car i'm there thinking is that a fucking 2005 porsche <laughs> But it's not 3D. If I say bat, you say tub. Bat tub? Yeah, bat tub. There's no replacing Brian Callen. That's correct. Brian's strength. Money was child flowing. Like wonder. It's all me. Good luck replacing Big Brown. Hey! Oh, oh, oh. I see a fat guy with a bucket of chicken. Two men face the most hey. difficult survival challenge of their lives. Look at this show. Look at this. Look at the quality. Look at how fun it was. Look at the creativity. They were trying to do something. They did it once and then they just stopped because it was just too much. I guess because it took too much effort. 
they didn't make enough money back on it and then the sponsors came to be fair this dropped around the same time podcast sponsorship started to really ramp up and they were probably thinking hold on why are we going to spend all this money doing these things we can just sit here and you know talk about fucking um what's your thing ag1 or something and get paid 50 grand do you know what i mean the hell is that it's a miracle no, man. Hey, you guys, it's real crazy stuff. Sorry! Again! Hey, going to the comfy barbecue? I'm throwing it. Would somebody give me some more coffee? This is already done. Ooh, somebody. Let's get a drug deal. I'm going to have to try and watch this in full, to be honest. It, it looked quite good. I might, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll do a little reaction on this on Patreon. This was actually quite good. I'm not going to lie. It was actually an attempt to be funny an attempt to be humorous an attempt and you know what it felt like which they don't do nowadays it felt very self-indulgent even if it doesn't make any money let's just do this just for the fuck of it just for the fun of it just for shits and giggles just to give our fans something different to kind of watch that's what it felt like you know now no now nobody actually thinking about it now nobody does anything for shits and giggles anymore everything is for like a paycheck or like an ad read you know, no one does stuff just for the sake of it. Oh, what? What was that kick about? Is that a UFC fighter? Look at that kick. You could tell Brendan didn't like kicking, it, even when he was in the UFC. Look at that kick. Pretty bad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What the hell's going on? 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 Things have definitely affected me. Big up Keith T. Appreciate it, brother. Sadly, they both look happy. That's the thing. Sadly, exactly. That's a brilliant line. Sadly, they both look happy. That's actually going to be a good title for a fucking mixtape or a song. Sadly, they both look happy. That's actually a very good title. <laughs> but big up uh, Keith T. Yeah, that's the thing, man. They were actually, you know, as well, that was almost, almost, um, that was very clear via this clip we're watching. They were actually friends back then too. Nowadays, I don't think they're friends. I think they go through the motions. They're mostly like colleagues. They turn up, do the show, go home. Back then, they were actually friends. They spent a lot of time together outside of the pod, you know, outside of recording. They actually enjoyed each other's company. They were eager to see each other. I mean, they were happy to see each other when they bumped each other. You know what I mean? Like, nowadays, it's just like, they literally come in just before the pod starts and leave as soon as it's finished. Nothing more, nothing less. Fucking wild how things have fallen off. It's absolutely wild how things have fallen off for these absolute regards. But what can you do? What can you do? Moving on from that one. What else we got here? What else do we have here? What else do we have here? Um, let's play this clip. Yeah. Let's play this clip. Where is it? There we go. It's got a Chris Lear one, yeah. So what do you guys think about this? So this is a clip from the T5K subreddit. It features Chris Lear going on stage and it looks like he's got a couple of niggers. A, part, a couple of neg negretos. A couple of darkies like myself on stage being openers for him. And I'm wondering, what the fuck are they doing there? My daddy said just no man. Don't they know he you know, has a penchant, allegedly? For the mujeres who are under fucking 19. Look, isn't that a black person? Isn't that like a, a small black woman? A fucking stud? Isn't that like a man with an afro? Why are black people fucking opening for Chris Alea? And how does he know black people? I thought Chris Alea was one of those guys that, you know, isn't race, doesn't have any issues on race, just happens to all have white friends. I'm surprised he's even got a black friend. I'm not going to lie. That don't, you know, Eric Griffin don't count because he's barely alive. But yeah, 
What's this black person doing opening for Chris Young girls the fact that he's still filling out these venues is pretty surprising. Not that, not because of the allegations, more so because of the lack of quality of his shows. Because he's not, that's the thing, even if you don't believe the allegations are true, if you're a Chris Alia fan, even if you think he's not guilty of the crimes he's been accused of, it's, you, you can't lie and sit here and say he's as funny as he was before he got cancelled. Because he's not. I think I sp spoke to somebody on a comment about this. I think... Apart from getting cancelled, I think Chris Delia, the the biggest thing for him, I feel like, is that he lost some of his spark. That spark he had when he used to go on stage, he lost it. I'm not sure if it was an edge, a spark, maybe it was some of the darkness. You know, maybe that's what happens when you touch kids and shit. You absorb some of their magic. I don't know. But he definitely lost some of his charisma, wit. Some of the X Factor went. And he's a shell of his former self. Like that special I watched on, on the Patreon or I did a reaction from, like it was pretty brutal to get through. That special he put out recently on his website. It was a tough, tough watch. So I don't know, man. Something happened to Chris. I don't know what happened to him. Well, we know what happened to him. But I would love to know the actual details behind why he's not as funny as he used to be. Because if you're a fan of Chris Elias now and you go to his shows, I'm assuming these people that fill in the arena or fill in this theatre maybe i'm maybe i'm projecting but i get the feeling that they're just doing it to, to support him because they like him as a person and they don't believe the rumors i don't think you could say with a straight face that you're sitting in a chair watching chris Alea perform stand up and you think he's better than when you saw him before he got cancelled because it's night and day the difference who the fuck is this by the way what track is this sounds fucking terrible why do all these guys like bro rap like this bro rap shit what is it why can't they just play like normal music anyway so i'm wondering just to be let's be um what's that thing called let's be uh let's be objective if i was a stand-up comedian and I was on the come up and I needed an opportunity. Would I be okay to open for Chris D'Elia considering his quote unquote alleged crimes and how he's perceived in comedy? Would it be a good thing for me career wise to go on tour with this guy, theater tours, when I know he's, you know, has been excommunicated from stand up comedy? He doesn't really hang out anymore in the green rooms, I think, of clubs. Maybe he never did because he never drink. He's not really cool with Rogan anymore. Rogan doesn't want to touch him with a 10-foot barge pole, always making jokes at his expense. And now he has to make money, you know, sitting, you know, sitting alongside fucking Brendan. Would it be smart for you to just put that to one side and think, you know what, fuck it. I'm about my paper. I've got to make this work as a career. I'm going to keep doing it. Like, what's a sensible decision in this regard? Do you take the gig from Chris, knowing it's going to, you know, some of that smart will rub off on you? Or do you hope that people will forget about it just take the job anyway and then hope it just blows over i don't know personally for me i wouldn't take it because i think you have to really do think about the long game but again maybe some of these guys don't think about the long game maybe they seriously do think that you're gonna be here for like a couple of years so why not get the most out of it and then kind of dip maybe but yeah that's crystal Leo. he's got a black opener maybe the black opener is part of a fucking whole consortium with them so he can possibly inoculate himself from you know any type of criticism from people maybe that's the case who fucking knows either way i find it absolutely hilarious i find it absolutely hilarious moving on oh look at this cameron pappy is that his name cameron pappy look at shrimp remember shrimp from t5k he's now doing stand-up let's see what this sounds like the title is that's my time dallas cameron pappy let's see what he's saying here so Maybe I should try stand up, innit? Maybe I should. If everyone is doing stand up in the hopes of becoming rich and famous, maybe I should try it as well. Because let's see how he sounds. Let's see how this fucking dweeb with like arms longer than his fucking body. Let's see what he does. I'm going to leave you guys on this because that's the light. Um, growing up, I always thought, uh, people always thought, told me I was yelling in conversation. And I grew up in an Italian family. So I just use the excuse, I'm not yelling, I'm Italian. But the older I got, and after hearing myself on this microphone, 
Um, I realize it's not because I'm Italian. It's because I'm fucking autistic. <laughs> and like, not the good kind of autism where, where you can take down a casino for everything they got, fucking Rain Man style. But I have the type of autism where I dress like I'm the star athlete in the Special Olympics. <laughs> Thank you guys. That's my time. You guys were great. <laughs> what? <laughs> How do you end with that joke? That's his ender. What? So he purposely, so he purposely wore that outfit so he could take the piss out of himself as a way to end his fucking. No way. One more time. That was fucking awful. Oh my god. That's some Kill Tony level shit, isn't it? I am going to leave you guys on this because that's a light. Um, growing up, I always thought, uh, people always, always thought, told me I was yelling in conversation. And I grew up in an Italian family. So I just used the excuse, I'm not yelling, I'm Italian. But the older I got, and after hearing myself on this microphone, um, I realized it's not because I'm Italian. It's because I'm fucking autistic. <laughs> And like, not the good kind of autism where, where you can take down a casino for everything they got, fucking Rain Man style. But I have the type of autism where I dress like I'm the star athlete in the Special Olympics. <laughs> Thank I just can't get past how he propped himself to make this joke. That's the thing. This joke is shit. But he put effort to make this shit joke a thing. So he purposely wore that jacket. So he could do this end joke and say, I look like a what? No, no. But again, do you blame him though? Do you blame him? Shrimp was around Brendan during, you know, the somewhat heyday when things were much better than what they are now. He was making, he was probably watching Brendan make thousands of dollars every fucking evening telling fucking those shitty, you know, kind of sad Saying, telling those shitty jokes. Can you blame him for hearing Cheyenne? Can you blame him for hearing that and thinking, I'm going to try? Because if he can make money doing it, I should be able to. Can you blame him? Fucking hell. What a her Like. <laughs> one more time. One more time. One more. Last time. Last time. Because this is fucking awful. Leave you guys on this because that's a light. Um. Growing up, I always thought, uh, people always thought, told me I was yelling in conversation. Yeah. And I grew up in an Italian family, so I just used the excuse, I'm not yelling, I'm Italian. But the older I got, and after hearing myself on this microphone, um, I realized it's not because I'm Italian, it's because I'm fucking autistic. <laughs> and like, not the good kind of autism where, where you can take down a casino for everything they got, fucking Rain Man style. But, <laughs> I have the type of autism where I dress like I'm the star athlete in the Special Olympics. <laughs> Thank you guys, that's my time, you guys were great. <laughs>
Kaepernick sued the NFL. He's a bad football player. But he sued the NFL. Of course, Brennan has a lot of things to say about that, isn't it? A black man trying to, you know, get his just, just rewards. He's always got something to say. Oh, because he was being... That, you know what, dude? That's a great point. Being black. He, he, he really brought up a great point. Bad football player. It doesn't matter, you know? It does, though, because he's like, oh, I'm trying to play, and I'm not on the team because I'm black. It's like... Shh. Now what? <laughs> now what, dude? Are I'll you take a knee, dude. I'll take a knee. Right. I know who like would have a shot. Would totally like play that up so much. Not me. No. Yeah, you don't really get. Because I've been there. So I know guys who lie about like, yeah, I was gonna go to the NFL. Yeah, I got or... hurt, man. Yeah. No, I literally they were just like, we're we're all set on white tight ends, dude. Yeah, like you're yeah. good. You know what's funny? I don't even know much about football, but even I could tell from the outside looking in, the Colin Kaepernick thing had more to do with him just being a distraction than it him not being good at playing football from what i could tell i don't think anyone or even himself was any kind was in any kind of delusion that he could be a starter for most teams i think even he said like he could easily be a you know a decent rotation option but most of the teams most of those franchises wherever you fucking describe them in football didn't want to sign him because of the distraction that came with it because of the circus because immediately when you sign him there's going to be a million and one interviews with papers with fucking youtube channels and tv stations every game is going to become a politically charged like and for a lot of football fans and even even in the uk is the same there's a lot of people that don't like the politicization of sports they want sports, professional sports, to be an escape from the Scrooge of everyday life. You don't want to be con con constantly reminded about the horrors of your everyday life when you want to go and kind of, you know, clock out of life and support your favorite team, release some tension, aggression, whatever it may be. So we could all tell from the outside looking in that that was the case. It was just a shame that Colin Kaepernick himself, maybe his wife or girlfriend at the time, and maybe his advisors weren't able to see that the more he kept going in hard with the whole kneeling shit, the more he kept talking up out about social injustice and about police brutality and about racism in general, systemic racism. As great as those causes were, it was definitely going to harm his ability to play football. And maybe in the end, he didn't really want to play it, but, you know, he was still training. He was still trying to offer himself up to teams and stuff. But I, I don't blame these, you know, football franchises who are notoriously press shy anyway um, for going out of their way to not sign him because they just still want to deal with the madness around it. Like, obviously there's some hypocrisy involved there because a lot of those same teams are probably ones that excuse or turn a blind eye to domestic violence and all this sort of shit, right? But in that particular situation with Colin Kaepernick, from what I was able to surmise, it was a mix of he's too much hassle, maybe he's not as good as he thinks he is, and they just don't want the hassle. It's you know, simple as that. It's like, you know, it was kind of black and white to see. But, you know here's brendan saying he wasn't a good football but it's like come on bro we know he was good enough to play especially as a rotation but you know who wants to deal with that whole fucking mad affair who wants to deal with that but yeah you got a lot papa you got a lot papa. when it comes to blacks papa always has a very strong opinion when it comes to black people he'd always make it very very clear what he stances when the blacks are involved that's for sure doesn't miss, miss a beat there let's continue on here Brendan is spearing the narrative that he knows details on no way is Brendan now trying to put out there that he knows what happened at Diddy's house. How? Because it's around the corner or something. But they, they live quite far away, no? Even if you zoom in, it doesn't really change much. They still could live quite far away. What the fuck are you talking about? Hold on, let's, let's play it. Let's see what he's talking about here. Raided. Brendan is spinning narrative that he knows something that happened. Okay, what what does he know that happened? What does he know that happened? Both houses raided. Both. Uh, hilarious. I have a friend who was involved with it. Why would you lie like that about something? I have a friend who's involved with it. Like who? Who? What do you have a friend who's involved with it? Friend who's no, involved. Fr he's friends with Mace. With <laughs> <laughs> no, with uh, someone who's doing the raiding. One of the guys. Do so Brendan is trying to let us know that he's now friends with police officers, so much so that they invited him on a raid of a high profile, you know, case. It's like, what? How's that making even make any sense? Jesus Christ. Nice. But yeah, I don't get this. 
How is he meant to know someone in the police force that could help give him info on the Diddy raid? How does that even make any sense? One, like, hold on. One more time. One more time here. One more time. Let's go from the beginning. Raided. Both houses raided. The uh, hilarious. I have a friend who was involved with it. Yes. What do you have a friend who was involved with it? Maybe you knew a girl that got fucking, you know, got her fucking water spiked, but you knew a guy that, would, come on, let's be real. Oh, it's not quite friend who no, he's, he's friends with Mace. With, <laughs> <laughs> no, with uh, someone who's doing the raiding. Lab. One of the guys doing the raiding. Really? Yeah. yeah. One of the guys doing the raiding. <laughs> Even though he says raiding, it doesn't sound believable. Look how he's looking down when he's telling the story. By the way, avoiding eye contact. Definitely a definitely a true story. Oh shit! So you already said too much. Yeah. yeah. Hey. I mean, I'm not going to give you any details. Yeah, yeah, you will off. You will. Uh, off air, I will. Listen, it, off air, I didn't take out. Off air, cool, sure you will. The same way that he provided us with 600 pages, right? Off air. Or oh, provided Bobby Lee with 600 pages off air. They, until they put out that there's a warrant for his arrest and he has to turn himself in, this is nothing. Of course they would say this, right? Of course Eric Griffin and this cast of fucking, you know, PDFs and Graper apologists would say that. We can't judge a man until he's been charged. Of course you say that sitting across from fucking Crystalia. Just wait. Okay. Oh, you think the feds raid two houses for the fucks of it? No, I'm just saying though they they're raiding. And he jumped on something. a plane, a private plane. What kind of? Why do you think there's a? Why do you think there's a need to lie about this? Right. We're all going through the same level of like disbelief and shock about the whole Diddy thing, right? We're all experiencing the shock and the surprise somewhat of such a respect, not respected, of such an important cultural figure in Diddy going down for what he may eventually going down for. We're all collectively experiencing it. That's the fun in it because we're all learning these new things. Oh my God, do you see a lawsuit that mentioned this? Did you hear about the pink cocaine? Did you hear about the Usher thing? The Mc, the Mc Mill thing? We're all finding this out in real time together. That's what makes it fun. You can talk about it with your colleagues at work, talk about it with your family members, with your friends. With some rand, we're all kind of finding out together. Why does Papa feel the need to be the one person who knows just a little bit more? Exactly, Koyla. He is that guy that lied about everything because there's no need to, because we all experience it together. And he, but he has to lie a bit more. It's like it's like we all got Game Boys in school. We all got that one game that came with it because that's how Game Boys were sold back in the day. You'd have to buy the Game Boy, and they'd obviously give you pack a game included in it or packs you have to buy. Imagine we all had to buy this one particular game and it was shit, but we all made it work because it's the only game that's available. Then Papa comes around and is like, oh, I've actually got four games. No proof or anything, no evidence, but just trust me. Same with this regard. Just trust me, bro. I know somebody in fucking, you know, in HSI. I know somebody in fucking CIA, right? I know something, I know somebody in the fucking LAPD that can help. Like, come on, bro. Come on. Why lie about this? Like, why? This is raided. Both houses raided. Uh, hilarious. I have a friend who was involved with it. What do you have a friend who's I have a friend. Again, very the, the term friend in America is fucking all over the place. But I love Eric's face. Even though he's a fucking redact himself. Look at his face. He immediately is like, what? He immediately doesn't buy it. Immediately he doesn't buy it. All with it. Friend who no, you're fr he's friends with Mace. With, <laughs> <laughs> no, with uh, someone who's doing the raiding. The One of the guys doing the raiding. Really? Yeah. yeah. Doing the raiding. Yeah. Oh right. shit! So you, you already said too much. Yeah. yeah. Hey. I, I mean, I'm not going to give you any details. Yeah, yeah, you will off. Uh, will. Off air, I will. Listen, if, off air, I didn't until take they out. until they put out that the there's ratings. a warrant for his arrest and he has to turn himself in. This is nothing. Just wait. Okay. Oh, you think the feds raid two houses for the fucks of it? Why is he acting like he knows things? We're, read, we're reading the same things. We've all got access to the same information. We've all seen the same videos. Why is he acting like he's got more information than other people? It's like, come on, bro. What a weird No, guy. I'm just saying. What a, honestly, one of the most interesting, bizarre guys I've ever seen in my entire life, especially when it comes to the lying. It's just, it's just like second nature to him. He just needs, he just must lie. He needs to lie. God damn it, what a weirdo. Anyways, my friends. I have to love you and leave you for now. 
I gotta go. Should I actually go gym straight away? Or should I go to bed for a bit? I don't know. But probably gonna go gym um in a few minutes as well. Why not get the fucking pump in? Um, but yeah, gonna leave it for now and I'll probably stream again later on. Actually, I can't do it later on today because I'm gonna DJ later. But I'll pick a day. Maybe it'll be Sunday. Maybe it'll be Sunday. But either way, thank you for tuning in. Um, been a pleasure, never a chore. I've got a ton of things I've got to catch up on as well, so don't worry. Um, we are going to sort that out soon but thank you for those of you tuning in so make sure you smash the like button down below for me before you leave that'd be greatly appreciated links to myself and everything else included can be found in the description i'll also update it with discord link as well if that's not working and um yeah man thank you for checking me out random show settings i'll see you guys again very very soon take care my friends thank you for hanging Bye-bye.